Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's that's a common misconception. It's not actually curry. It's bastardized, like lesser curry, not like proper Indian curry. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We just call it Indian because it's from a place with people who look from the Middle East. Right. It's like Chinese food in America. Yeah, it's like. Oh, they look Asian. Clearly, it's Chinese food. Yep. Uh, get the chat in front of me. A great way chat to start the stream you. off. Uh, just a bit of casual racism. I mean... As opposed to what? Competitive racism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would that look like? Professional racism? Uh, that's called US uh, Congress now. Um... What? That was funny. In my head. Um... Where's my things? Oh, there. Oh, it helps if I have it here. Ah, need... uh, well, that was a mistake. Let's see how that works out. I just accidentally grabbed the Worcestershire and said sorry for my Ron Dover Chinese food. We'll see how that works. <laughs> it's, you know what? You've that... made the correct decision. Yeah, Worcestershire. Sorry. I mean, it's a salty brown sauce. How how different could it be? <laughs> to be fair, you can put that shit in anything and it'll taste better. Um, that's Lee and Perrin's. So. Lee and Perrin's pretty good. Or as the British call it, Lee and P. E ah. Um. Then I... Not bad. Gives it a weird beef undertone for chicken, but you know. Eh, it can work. It's also what I have for lunch. I'm eating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called tough shit now. Yeah. Do -do. Uh, and then we let people know on that part. In before you uh, all get killed, I have to make new characters. On the plus side, they'll be level two, so. There might be a revolt if we had to restart at level one. <laughs> See? It's thematic! Um, <laughs> I just started my own revolt, is all. Uh... Oops, no. I almost put the opening spiel in the uh on uh my Twitter. That would have been that would have been uh it's quite about it's quite beyond the um the character limit. Wouldn't have worked out too well, it would have been very confusing. There we go. Hello everyone. I'm A.D. Springer, also known as Corbinian. This is the Electric Metropolis video game tour, and we are playing The Great Continental War of the Setting Sun, a Fantasy Age 2nd Edition RPG. Uh, it's set in a historical fantasy world inspired by the wars, uh, the Napoleonic Wars. And today, we start on the last day of the current campaign, of the current campaign, but current chapter, I guess is a better way to put it. Let us get going once I get it in front of me. On a misty morn in the spring of eight of the eighteen XX, three Almanian ships slice through the fog, their sails billowing like ghosts over the waters of Lysel. Among them flew the regal banners of the House von Sonnenlichstadt, heralding the arrival of the Imperial Princess. On the shore, the pounding drums of the Imperial Guard of Gallia set a somber rhythm, echoing through the ancient town. Lysel, once revered as a sacred site of St. Solara, now bore witness to the convergence of two of the mightiest families in the Setting Sun continent, soon to be bound in the union of marriage. Yet, this tranquil morning would transform into the crucible for four unsung heroes, destined to prove their mettle on the battlefield. Little did they know 
This misty dawn marked the inception of the Great Continental War of the Setting Sun, where their fates would be tested in the fires of conflict. And we first look to the busy and bustling, well, not so busy and bustling, because this is very early, 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 like very early morning when the four of you gather uh, outside the Militia Garrison house. The morning light has only just dawned. You all had just enough time to wake up, get your uniforms on. Uh... Troops are milling. You can hear the thump, the thump, the thump, thump uh, rhythm of the, and you can hear some horns announcing the fanfare of the Imper of the Emperor of Gallia. But you four have a meeting with Captain Sebastian Leclerc. But I let you have a meeting between the four of you first. Uh, would it be actually? Outside the garrison house or elsewhere. Um. Well, we've convened. We've uh, convened at the McNeil house and the Dumas house. Sure, uh, come to Porsche's house. It's small, but we have coffee. We have coffee at the Dumas house, and it's not small. I prefer tea. But it's a shorter walk to the garrison. Just yeah. across the street. <laughs> yeah, but like one of us has to sit on Diego's bed, and the other one on his foot locker, and someone has to sit like it's on not a that small. <laughs> I mean, Bianchi will probably just end up standing anyway. He's been he's okay. been lying down for like eight hours. I've got a four top dining table. Yeah, but they're for regular people. The fo uh, the four of you are warmed by the uh, iron stove nearby uh excuse me for being a junior officer you welcome. you you are a, a man of high birth there's no excuse <laughs> well, he get, well he actually gets an officer's house rather than you know going to uh his home somewhere else in the right <laughs> in the village <laughs> oh, do we know where we've all been posted today or yeah what are our orders for the day the three of you know that would fall on the ears of McNeil or upon his voice at least should he find it does he find it <laughs> Cormac McNeil Earl of Straithcliff. McNeil, where are we, lad? <laughs> uh, sorry, there was something loud going on here in my house. Sorry. It's okay. okay. <laughs> Can you repeat, please, what's going on? Uh, the four of you are meeting in the Borgia house, a, the junior officer house, having some coffee in a respectably sized officer's house. And your officers, two of your officers, and your mentee uh, corporal as it were uh look to you for orders for the day okay well the orders as they stand is that i am actually going to be deployed with some infantry along the stormhelm household is that correct jim did i get that right i uh, wasn't the, the lake uh you are to stand sentry alone with the uh with some cover you know of the uh of voltageers. Exactly. And as for the rest of you, I have half a mind, honestly, to place you under the command of either Diego or Isabel. Uh, uh, who it's going to be, it's up to you two. As my orders are different from yours. Certainly, um, rarely do me and Diego find that we need to be at the same place at once till the culmination of a battle. And my voltageers are already deployed at the Stormhelm mansion. Uh, I just well, I'll be, to go. 
I'll be commanding the Voltigeurs, however, if you were to look at this map, which I will now place on the conveniently placed table, if I recall correctly, the Emperor is going to be heading down this route where the arrow was placed, uh, our, and then going up here to the household, like so. Your job, first and foremost, is to maintain peace along this border, oh. where the X is. Ah! Sorry, a uh, uh, kitten just jumped onto my knee with all claws. That's all right. Uh, funny cats you have here in your household here, Diego. And then the next path that must be maintained is this one. He will also be heading backwards. Let me grab a differently colored pen along here, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, uh, perhaps um, the cavalry will um, stand, stay at this intersection. That way, we can, you know, salute and and, and provide some ceremony as the emperor passes the first time. But also, he's, you know, it seems like a pretty important intersection for all the information you've given us. So. Yes, I agree. The cavalry should, if the rebel fears anything, it is horses. So the cavalry should maintain its position here to guard the docks. Uh, well, Diego um, and Luciano, you two can head up here with the Emperor and the Imperial Guard and guard them along the way. If you have uh, Borgia, I would offer... Bianchi um, to ride with me today. I have a horse and a corporal's billet open at the moment. I mean, aren't I technically a corporal in the voltages as well? You're a corporal in the something. That means you're a corporal everywhere. It is merely an offer. I, I mean, while I, these ideas are fantastic, more than likely our meeting with the captain is going to tell us completely opposite things to do. Diego, while sipping his coffee, points one finger at, at uh, Luciano like that. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> uh, someone give me, um, just one of you, uh, intelligence, probably military lore. Nope. I ain't it. Borgia That's usually me. Hang on, let me, let me deal with this recalcitrant kitten. Okay. Sorry, guys. How dare you. That's what you get for having an Almanian cat. You should have got a Castrum dog. <laughs> okay. Intelligence military lore. 16. And five some points. Nice. Um, you recognize that um, the level of knowledge that McDaniel has about the orders and stuff, he seems to be, he must be relegating s something that he already knows about mm -hmm. the, about the large, the larger uh, strategic uh, elements. Um, however, uh, you get the feeling that the the meeting with the clerk would be largely unnecessary because if he if he were to ask for like move you guys around and keep, get your troops in order, um, unless he had some grand stratagem, he would just leave it to McNeil to uh, render his troops in in good order. If he's asking for you three in particular, especially with a corporal in, in uh, attendance, uh, it's probably to do with your findings uh, regarding any uh, an investigation over the last week. Ah, okay. We do have five cent points. I'll not rob you of them. Oh, let's see. There it is. That's why I had it back. I don't think there's terribly much. Well, you could do extra information. 
Maybe an insight? It's not terrible bad. Inside from performing action block. Uh, yeah, let's do uh, extra information and insight. Why not? Extra information is extra information. Insight is something that I do that logically proceeds from this, sussing out the military position, I guess, uh, plus one bonus. Very good. Um, <clears throat> it occurs to you that given the presence of the uh, of Mato Riverwind, mm -hmm. um, this is information LeClerc will share with him to help and with Lieutenant Zeppelin to coordinate the defense. Um, you know in the military life uh, in the academy and the structures that although you know that the four of you have done a lot of work, in the end and end, ends of ends, you are but a militia. And uh, right. you are... Uh, but you get the feeling that they, they're using you to get you guys to get local information because you are the local militia. Um, All right. But you don't think they're going to tell you the grand scheme that they that the three of them will have. All right. At most, the clerk would know if you were to uh, those uh, the particulars. Okay, the so for the uh, uh, insight role to proceed from this one, um, knowing now that uh, McNeil is going to be in command of the Voltageurs for this. Um, where knowing this kind of route layout and, and all this, um, where should I try to position myself to be of the most use in defense of the emperor? Giving my particular skill sets. I would roll, uh, yeah, a follow-up roll would be an intelligence roll, military lord, but you get a plus one because you have a, now that you have yeah. that insight that you have now, plus what McNeil's told you about the route. Yeah. Yeah, 14. 15, uh, 15 with plus one, yeah. 15 is plenty. Um. Well, actually, I can, I can kind of stage it a bit. I can kind of... 13 is what I was looking for, but higher might be nicer. Yeah, 15. Um, traditional thought and military uh, teachings would tell you that a nice high vantage point along the entire route would be best. <laughs> One that people wouldn't expect, say, on top of the Gilded Griffin Inn, so you could kind of see the entire route. Also, it's a good way to, it's a good place to kind of scurry away anyone who's hiding out on the roof or uh, up in the attic space or something like that. However, because you get the higher roll, that little bit of nugget gives you a feeling that if you know that, then surely an assassin would know that. Okay. So likely... Milit on a strategic level, the larger defending it from a mil uh, from like people charging in on uh, or something like that, the Gilded Griffin right. is the best place to be. It's a great vantage point. If you're trying, however, if you don't want to be noticed, you need to hide in. We um, need to do a bit of voltageering uh, either among the townhouses near the dock, or in this uh, in Leclerc's house uh, on the corner there, because. The more you highlight your position, because if you're on the roof of the Gilded Griffin and you'll be in your uniform, your bright blue uniform, unless, well, no, you have a different uniform. You could, yep. you'll stand out on the roof. You're not meant, it's, right. whereas uh, there's no way to get around that um, unless you like knock a hole in someone in the wall, which the innkeeper probably won't be a fan of. Yeah. Um, whereas from here or in the townhouses, you can still observe a good portion of the route while remaining yourself hidden. And I think that's my best uh, 
position rather than like riding alongside the emperor as uh, Cormac or Mac, yeah, as Mac, Cormac suggested. Uh, no, because you you you're a sharpshooter. You need range. Right. I mean, yeah, a a lesser officer might be tempted to do it from the church tower. But the problem yeah. is that if it gets in, if it gets into a ground fight, you're so far away. It take, it'll take right. you so long to get there. Well, and they're not too many super long shots. So okay, cool. I will keep that in my back pocket to. Uh, well, if we're thinking the captain's not going to give us any, uh, uh, lieutenant. Uh, with my particular skills as a sharpshooter, I suggest I uh, ask the captain's permission to uh, take position in his uh, atop his house or in his attic. Uh, that way, I can have a good line of sight um, along the emperor's route while also remaining out of the more obvious perches for uh, sharpshooter. Very well. Um, permission granted. Mm. You can speak with the captain on your own accord. Hmm. So are we mostly set then, plan-wise? Mr. Bianchi, you are riding today with Sulatan Dumas? Uh, if nothing changes, or if I'm not given specific orders, correct. Good. Uh, oh, so... Diego, do you have a croissant? Hmm? Oh, asking if I have croissants in the house? Yes. Uh, yes, I had some sent over from the inn, just because I knew we were getting together. And I unfold the cloth on the basket on the table. To let uh, out some... So, Lieutenant Dumas, your position on the docks is uh, amicable to you? That and uh, these croissants. <laughs> uh, butter? Jam? Chocolate? Chocolate. Chocolate? How rich are you, Diego? Well, What's I mean, a lot of chocolate. He doesn't even have to yeah. buy it. He just like nabs a uh, nabs a, a package well, when it comes and, you know, on the ship. To, to be fair, that you know, if, if it's like the, the historical France, you know, Gallia owns a lot of coffee and sugar and chocolate supplies <laughs> in the, in the uh, island south and of the of Vinland. Mm. We're the big importers of that thing. Yes, yeah, chocolate. Yes. Mm, good. A slight okay. different than the Tin Islander chocolates. Like, oh, that's a bit more expensive. Why? We have to buy it from the friggin' galleons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, well. Soon there enough, are certain we'll... advantages to being the son of a trading house. We'll win our own Trafalgar and then we'll rule the waves. So. Oh, good luck with that, Cormac. Yeah. yeah, that would be the thing for all of us to be galleon sailors and change that bit of history. <laughs> In any case, you all have your orders. Diego, speak with the captain when you're, whenever you're ready. I shall go to the Stormhelm house and take a foxhole, perhaps. McNeil, you uh, suddenly remember that the four of you are to meet the clerk soon. Oh, we are to meet the clerk soon. Oh. oh, very well. Shall we depart? Or are you too busy with your croissants? I can eat on the way. No. <laughs> okay. uh, Uncle, if I could have a quick private word with you, and then we can follow along. Uh, okay. Oh, Cormac? Yeah. Right. You two wait for us wait for us outside then. Gotta make sure Bianchi knows which end of the horse is forward. Isn't yep. it the, the, the part which shit comes out? Hmm. Depends on how moody it's being that day. Oh. What is it, nephew? So how did you wound up wind up being posted at the lake? Well, uh, do you want the short version of it or the long version of it? Best be short. We haven't much time before our meeting with Leclerc. There was an upstart Imperial Guardsman who questioned my loyalty. <laughs> Need I say more? Oh, and let me guess, you threw him out of your house. Oh, yes, and I threatened at sword point as well at some point, I think. Ah, well, Uncle, that not the most diplomatic thing you've ever done, but... In any event, a couple of things you need to know about the lake. Pay very close attention. Mm -hmm. There are two boxes sunk in the lake with uh, items that would implicate somebody in a monarchist fashion for something that would happen to all sorts of seals, seals uh, faction uh, ma material. Um, so I think at some point something may come down at the lake, and it is entirely possible that you may be 
in danger there. Uh, make the rounds of my voltagers and tell them to be sure and hop to it should you blow your whistle for help. But also, and I'll sketch out a quick map. When I was there the other day, I discovered this small defile that is a perfect place to uh, provide good cover and concealment while also allowing you to keep an eye on the surrounding area. If you'll remember, GM, I spent a uh, mm-hmm. action point for such a place to be there. You did so? It was, no. if I recall, like right here? Uh, it was like know. it was like along the shoreline here. Uh, no. Okay. So be, be careful, Uncle. Something is going on that we haven't penetrated to the bottom of. And I feel like you may being put be, have been put in range of whatever cannon may be going off. My, my, you really are full of surprises, aren't you, nephew? Don't worry. I haven't lived this long only to die by something buried in a lake. I'm not really worried about the stuff in the lake. I'm worried about the people who come to get the stuff in the lake. But well, I, I haven't been around well this long without uh, uh, developing a nose to sniff out people trying to dig up suspicious things from lakes. But my, I'll be fine. All right, just be careful, Uncle. If you see that Imperial Guard Lieutenant, I will salute him and say, "Sir, yes, sir." And flick a bogey at him if you can. Oh, ever the diplomat, Uncle. Now let's join our friends. Imperial Guardsmen do always get under my skin, nephew. Careful, they don't do it for real. Hopefully, not the horse. Why has it a long face? That never made sense. Because you put apricot jam inside. <clears throat> That's so, uncomfortable. So, <laughs> I presume the four of you go to meet with Leclerc. Yep. Yes. Uh, yep. You see the Imperial Guard. You see Lieutenant Stefan uh, has rousted the uh, the twenty five at the garrison uh, of the Imperial Guard, as well as assembled uh, through the uh, sergeants. Uh, the uh, Main inf- the line infantry uh, for the m- militia as well as the uh, cavalry to get them ready for you guys to show up. It's like, well, we'll since we're getting squared off, let's make sure the locals uh, are awake early. And I think the cavalry should be back at nine because we had one wounded, but it's been half a week since then. Yeah, so they'll be. Yep, then uh, go in to meet the captain. Or I, I guess, you know, knock on the door and then well, yeah, we'll proceed knock on the in. Door, take our shake There's though. no protest. Yep. And Price, salute. Get a salute. <sighs> Salut, good morning. <laughs> the clerk says, just rubbing his head, <laughs> as the captain himself is not an early riser. The militia is not an up and atom unit. <laughs> so, but everyone has to be ready for the ships to come in anytime. So, Bad I mean, night he's sleep, kinda, even he has like a cup of coffee, uh, a cup of coffee at his desk, just kind of rubbing his head and kind of nodding uh, at your salutes and recognition. Yes, only Diego and the Vultures are up early. Bad night's sleep, Captain. I uh, had to sit across from uh, Lieutenant Safwan and Officer Riverwind going over plans and plans within plans and ploys within ploys. Ah, yes, Lieutenant Safwan, a most uh, uningratiated person. I think you're yeah. all right. Careful, Uncle, or you'll wind up in the lake. Perhaps I'm due for a swim after all. Uh, yes, Captain. Um, we have assembled our plans, and we are ready for execution. Of orders, I mean. Uh, I believe uh, Safwan went over the uh, parade route with you. Unfortunately, he did. Careful, Lieutenant. I said nothing of any sort of uh, a rude bearing, sir. Continue he did go to, over the plans with me. Continue to do so, Lieutenant. We move on to other things. As you know your orders, and I trust uh, Lieutenant McNeil here to ensure that we do our part. I will be with the main force of the Imperial Guard with Safon. 
and I'll be meeting with my counterpart of the Imperial Guard and once the Emperor arrives and leaving the defense of this uh, village and the Emperor to him. But he'll largely uh, leave the particulars of Lysel to me. He's, his task will be to be defend the Emperor in particular, and I can focus on Lysel in particular. Uh, <clears throat> pardon, Mon Capitan, but there is a slight uh, adjustment to our positioning that uh, I will need your permission for both as my commanding officer and as a property owner. Um, I believe... Uh, he furrows what? his brows at you. He looks at McNeil like, what the hell is this? And then looks at you. Please, as, Captain, uh, let, him, let him speak. His idea is sound. As Lieutenant McNeil will be uh, taking over command of the Voltigeurs from uh, the Stormhelm Lake, mm. uh, I believe I am best positioned as a sharpshooter to cover the Emperor's route. Um, while the Gilded Griffin Inn uh, provides a good spot, I think that is a spot that uh, any would-be assassin would... Uh, definitely be aware of. So I propose taking position uh, in your attic and roof, uh, which provides me with a equal field of fire to cover the Emperor's route um, while doing so from a perhaps unexpected location. Uh, give me a communication check. <clears throat> Use uh, and take Melter's reputation into account. Okay. Persuasion? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this will be, I think I've got, double check, I think I've got three for militarists. One, two, three, yeah. So this will get a plus three. 17. Very well, Sue Lieutenant, I'll trust your judgment on this. He, Thank uh, you, sir. I'll, uh... Oh, I don't have the time for it. He reaches into his don't have time to count the silver, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs the... He grabs a set of keys and he, and he throws them at you. Any property unaccounted for, Captain, you, I shall answer for personally. I don't suspect the Borgias are going to rob a Leclerc, uh, Lieutenant, but I thank you for your concern. Should the Imperial Guard get fussy about the placement of Sir Lieutenant Borgia, you are most welcome to also suggest that they place a member of the Imperial Guard there to watch over him, should they feel the need to. I'm okay. sure I'm sure Mr. Borgia would not mind a grenadier of the 1ER standing next to him. No, uh, of course not. And I will, uh, with the captain's permission, I was planning to inform Lieutenant Safwan of uh, my positioning. Last thing I wanted us to receive a volley from mm. friendly troops. Wisely so. Uh, I would suspect a Voltageer of the Imperial Guard is going to come to meet you. Uh, so Fair enough. They, and they will uh, they will have written orders in the Imperial Guard, so be sure to check that. <clears throat> Don't want someone yes, just... I learned much in the Revolution where some people would take uniforms and pretend at such things, but few pretend to militia, but some would dare to pretend. Imperial Guard. I mean, we did so with the Royal Guard. He smirks. Mm. Uh, if that is all, Captain, I think we should be getting to our postings. It is not, Lieutenant. I need to know your findings and who you suspect is the primary threat of assassination. Or rather, who is the one who is behind it? Ah, uh, from... All four of us, Captain. Well, you're the ones I sent on the matter, and you've had a week. You must have something. You must have a clear idea of who it is. Well, uh, I, shall let my, I should let my Sulu turn speak before I speak my mind. And feel free to speak freely, uh, Corporal. He waves at Bianchi. Uh, well, sir, the evidence is conflicting. Uh... So, Lieutenant, uh, oh God, I forgot, I forgot Isabel's last name. Dumas. Dumas. Right. So, Lieutenant Dumas, uh, Dumas' action against the, uh, noble house, uh, offers some evidence that it is a monarchist 
plot. However, it there is also... It oh, can't ahead. be, though, because if those men had actually belonged to that house, uh, their lord would have been here days ago demanding recompense. That's a point. Um, and certain evidence that uh, Corporal Bianchi found uh, uh, in the Stormhelm Lake indicates that there may be some plan afoot to frame the uh, monarchist faction for whatever is taking place. Um, I honestly, Captain, I suspect this is a power play on the part of uh, the Emperor and his people. I don't know what he hopes to achieve, uh, but uh, this Mateo Riverwind, who seems to be the chief of his guard and Major Domo, um, I think whatever happens is ultimately being directed by the Emperor or his people, um, which means that whatever happens, the Emperor thinks that it will advantage him in some way. Uh, nephew, that's Mato. Your uh, your peninsular accent is a bit strong there. I'm not from the peninsula. I'm from right here. Oh, your accent is a bit strong. <laughs> Just because I don't I, I don't speak whatever tribal language that he comes from. Mato, okay. Um, I do not particularly... I'm not particularly happy about having to report this, Captain, as you can imagine. Um, not particularly fond of the potential consequences that could come from this report for me, but nonetheless, that's what my findings lead me to believe. As to whether or not the target is actually the Emperor in whatever is happening, uh, I don't know. Um, could be the Emperor himself, it could be the Elder Stormhelm, it could be the Princess. Or it could be neither of them, just some sort of <sighs> demonstration uh, attack with enough evidence left behind where the Emperor can carry out whatever maneuver in the great game he needs to carry out. My investigation uh, suggests the same. I have been able to rule everyone out uh, except for the bourgeois and the Lysel. Um, or the, uh, the Stornhelms, but no evidence indicating the bourgeois either, and my interactions with them didn't suggest a murderous fervor had gripped them, so I, uh, with no strong evidence pointing to them, I default to this, this the same conclusion that uh, Lieutenant Borgia has arrived at. But if this is a move by the Emperor in the game, I don't know whether or not we should thwart it or let it play out. Um, Captain. Yes, Corporal. I may not reveal where the information I am going to tell you comes from, but I believe it should be taken with seriousness. We're all listening. When whatever happens starts, lead the Stormhelm residents to the Imperial Guard. Focus our troops for in Lysel. Uh, give me a communication check <laughs> with uh, your military's reputation as Lekirk just stares at you. He doesn't look angry. He seems to be just giving you a, a thorough measure. Like he's really giving your words thought, which is not a thing you're used to captains doing. <laughs> uh, I've got a negative and a... Oh, no, I've got two positive. No. I'm, I'm equal. Well, did you did you actually join the Lysel yet? 
No, I only got two. Okay. The clerk is silent for a bit. Um, you see, you see no anger on him. You see, he actually, he actually puts down his coffee and touches his hand to his chin and then looks I, to I, McNeil. I mean no disrespect, Captain, in how I said it. He, he waves a, a dismissing hand, like don't a more like don't worry about it sort of wave, and looks at McNeil. Yes. Do you concur with this suggestion, Lieutenant? I'll look over to Luciano. Can I give him like a once over? Is he is he being straight with us? Uh, Luciano, on a meta level, are you? Uh, yeah, that's essentially what Riverwind told Luciano, but I'm just not telling anyone where the fuck I know that from. Uh, McNeil, you can give me a perception check. Uh, empathy. But, uh... As if I had empathy. I'm a diplomat with no empathy. <laughs> Sir, Ten Islander diplomat. Uh, can I give you uh, intelligence with a focus of evaluation, perhaps? Uh, well, he, you can evaluate how much he'd sell on the market, but I think that's a little getting ahead <laughs> oh, okay. of yourself. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Hopefully it's a high price. Here's a 16. Uh, yeah, you get the read that what Bianchi is telling you, he's saying with a sh with surety. Um, he's not, you don't see any deception or he's standing square. Um, you've probably seen Bianchi say similar truths but from sources that he can't really talk about especially since he's of a different class than you are so he might know things that you don't uh but he can't tell you right like you know some urchin does something or some drunken soldier does some other foolishness but he has to tell you he's like oh, i heard this that and the other and you've he's done that before so it's one of those oh he's doing that again uh, just on a much grander scale you know the difference between someone stealing your scones and military stratagem they are worlds away, but uh, it seems Luciano is the same uh, in both worlds. I'll shrug my shoulders and say, Sorry, Cap. I can't exactly trust anyone these days, but his word is as good as mine, because he's under my command. Uh, L Luciano, this uh, my men uh, and the lieutenant here are going to be out at the Stormhelm estate, unless the positioning of the Voltigeurs uh, is changed. Do you believe them to be in any, to be in harm's way? I do not believe them to be in harm's way, but maybe when the lieutenant heads in that direction, <clears throat> he may inform the Voltigeurs that there are possible alterations in their maneuvers later in the day. As I was saying, Captain, it's really difficult to find people you trust these days, but his word is as good as mine. However, I do not know whether the Imperial Guard will conform to this request, given my recent altercation with Lieutenant Safwan. I can speak with Lieutenant Safwan. We have a good report. And besides which, if he gets, uh, if he disagrees with our redeployment, uh, send him to me and I'll see it right. I'll make sure he understands. Please do, I'd rather not pull rank on an Imperial Guardsman. <clears throat> oh, I would love to do that if you would give me the opportunity, mm. Captain. Except he outranks uh, you, don't... Lieutenant. <laughs> and whether or not the Captain himself outranks the Lieutenant is... A complicated issue. <laughs> I await orders in whatever form or shape they may be. I will assemble the Voltigeurs at the Stonehelm Estate for the time being. Should these orders change later on, I will deliver them to the letter. Well, the question becomes, where do we put them if not near the Stonehelm House? I would suggest Captain in the center of Lysel. At the statue? The statue, between the statue and the gilded griffin, that way we may 
maneuver in all directions. So you're speaking of... One second. He gets up and he makes a little space on his table and he unrolls the, a map of uh, Lysel. Do you mean, like, here, between the officer houses? No, sir, I think he means... May I have a pen? Uh, go ahead. I, I mean around here, sir. Around so I may respond. Here. Oh, on the uh, eastern side of the... Uh... Well, the, the only problem is they'll be out in the open, sitting there, unless they hide near the mm. grand torches. Well, if we maybe place some people in the tree line, well, some people, but yes, towards more central of the, the settlement. They could be in loose order. They know how to fight in loose order in the open. Yeah. Do, do they, Borgia? He looks at you. <laughs> mm. I hope they had better as much as I've been training them, but... Uh, I mean, the Voltigeurs are are, uh, are are skirmishers and uh, outpost soldiers at their best, and also sharpshooters. They certainly can function as a rapid react response force uh, from a central location. Um, I but... think I would be better for that, though. Perhaps mm. you I agree. commandeer the uh, attics of all of these houses here. Well, if we are to defend the town, I suggest we use the Voltigeurs as they are uh, intended and put uh, outposts at various points so that anything that comes from without, uh, we can get word back to the central reaction force of the cavalry. Well... If uh, if the Voltageur is numbered in the hundreds, then it might make sense to send out, you know, smaller groups. But as it is, any one of those groups might be annihilated by even a small force. Uh, enough. Why are we speaking of annihilation? Look, despite my best wishes, I have been placed in charge of the Voltageurs, and I shall hold at the Stonehelm Estate until and if my orders change. Is Lieutenant, that understood? Lieutenant, what we're discussing is where it's going to move after the point. I am consulting with your officers where my I wish to deploy my officers. My Sioux lieutenants are bickering, Captain. They're and discussing I do not allow strategy, bickering. Lieutenant. Are you There's all right? A There's a difference between strategy and bickering, sir. <laughs> Borja kind of looks at, looks at uh, uh, Isabel and <laughs> looks at the uncle and looks at the captain. Uh, in any event, I think uh, Isabel's right on that, uh, if we're worried about outside force. Perhaps, um, it, it perhaps you could the stage them all at the mayor's office. It's close to the Stormhelm estate. It's not too far from the blacksmiths. It uh, has multiple stories. Captain, what are the plans for the market square during uh, the Imperial procession and the ensuing activities? It shall be empty, of course, I think. Right, Captain? Largely, but uh, some of the store owners will be there to uh, be at the pleasure of uh, the Emperor. So, But the, re the general uh, folk will be cleared by the uh, Imperial infantry. Uh, then I would suggest... Uh, pulling back the Voltageurs to there. They're trained in house-to-house uh, -house fighting. The Market Square provides good cover and allow and keeps them from having to be bunched up as a single target and is uh, relatively close to allow them to respond to any trouble elsewhere that they might need to be redeployed to. And if that's the case with the Voltageurs, if the cavalry, which will be placed generally around here, they can be redeployed to a central position as a relief or response force, with the line moving from the docks upward, if required, because I assume we have to keep the docks and the crossroad in good check, considering we have guests. Well, I mean, as I understand it, uh, this avenue needs to be pretty much blocked. Uh, the Emperor will be 
and, and his entourage will be entering here, the princess from here, and the procession will be largely th this way back and forth. Uh, but it appears that the Imperial Guard uh, wants this avenue uh, blocked. Yes, because they're afraid that rabble might come and disrupt the uh, the ceremony, which I understand the sentiment. Um, well, not to mention that a well-placed cannon or two there could sweep the crossroads clean. What sort of rabble do you think we're going up against, Diego? Rabble with cannons? The Uncle, I'm... The Salon de la Selle is what we're facing, Lieutenant. The Salon de la Selle does not own cannons. Are you Six sure pounders, of that, eight Lieutenant? Pounders or 12 pounders. I think I Last time I uh, had the opportunity to take a uh, take instruction at the academy, they had somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four thousand, depending on if you count naval vessels or not. And not to put too fine a point on it, uh, Lieutenant, but uh, uh, I have to address these problems with the skills at my disposal, and I'm a military man. That's the terms in which I think. I have to so, better to be uh, better to be prepared for something that never happens than to be unprepared for when it does. I understand that, Diego, but isn't this all a bit too much? Do you think we'll be facing cannons? It is the emperor and the princess. If you want to talk about a target-rich environment for the enemies of Gallia. Fine. Let us assume that the enemy then has several batteries of twelve pounders at their disposal. Well, then this is the last we shall speak together. Yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> a simple blockage of this uh, of this road here by our cavalry will do the trick. Like I said, if the rebel fear anything, it is a force. Yeah. Artillerymen are not terribly fond of them either once they get too close. Yes, the 12-pounders shall quake and tremble at the sight of Sulutan and Dumas. Have we... Diego rolls his eyes, but not where Cormac can see him easily. Have we come to a decision then? Mind yourself, Sir Lieutenant, because the captain certainly catches it. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, the plan is in good order. So, just so I have my clerk written it proper in case you need it, uh, where are you putting the voltageers uh, away from Thornhelm House? Uh, the market square. Oh, very good. Good cover. Let's them op er, operate in open order and good response point. If they are called to move away from their current positions, flanking the Stormhelm residents. <sighs> very well. To your orders. So, uh, if uh, Diego and me might have a second for an unrelated mm. issue, Captain. Uh, you'll be quick about it. Good day, Lieutenant Corporal. Good day, Captain. Um, yeah, as I leave, uh, Diego and me had been discussing, and I think, um, we were in agreement that, mm, uh, indeed. the Friends of the Constitutional Order have the best interests of the state at heart. And that we should be happy to help permanently. If introductions could be made. Uh, what is your what is the current reputation the two of you have with that uh, with the militarists? Plus three for me. Hold on a second. I need to start a separate column with uh plus five damn girl uh yeah is where, where did i get uh oh yeah because um i haven't had any downsides with them and um the getting the shrapnel scar and the blowing up the the wagon was plus two Oh, and yeah. then uh, I thumbed my nose at the monarchy in general. Um, 
and because the militarists don't favor <laughs> absolutist rule. Yeah, fair enough. I like that. It's actually higher than the revolutionaries now, which kind of plays into where I was going. Yeah. I will have letters sent to uh, my friends in uh, Lumerberg and ensure that others who uphold constitutional order will be aware of you. I'll have the pen, the relevant uh, emblems uh, forged for you by uh, uh, Monsieur Starbear. Uh, so I, that will have to wait until tomorrow before you can have him, or the uh, end of week, I imagine, depending on how much he's busy. But you'll have your marks. But if nothing else, as far as I'm concerned, the two of you are more than a fit uh, for the Friends of Constitutional Order. And next we meet, uh, all going well, will be at uh, my estate uh, at the end of the week. So I'll make my I'll make the formal introductions with the local uh, friends of the constitutional order there. But it'll be Thank you, sir. Very good, sir. Uh, a meta question: Does that mean we have access to the stuff, or we need to wait? You while? do because he's yeah okay. because that's that's why he's having it written out right away. That's uh, that's how the militarists get you access. They make sure that all the clerks have a kind of little wink and a nod of, hey, these people get preference. Okay. okay. It's like then, having your friend uh, in horse guards, put it that way. <clears throat> uh, then I think each of us could... Uh, is this a village or a town? Village. Okay, then the, each of us could get an additional one to six people, which could be useful considering how low our numbers are. Yeah, the I think we'd still have to train them up, though. Um, uh, no, well, because uh, with the militarist faction, they have the people you're recruiting. You'd be going to people. You'd be asking, "Hey, do you know anyone who's who uh, who's good with a uh, musket?" And they go, "Yeah, I know so and so retired so and so, and or this guy's on leave. Uh, this right. guy is um, he is part of the military, but he hasn't been re-signed on yet. I forget what the word is when they dismiss you, but they, they might call you back." Right. Um, there's there's people in the military you know, and they go, hey, if you knock on this guy's door and tell him, hey, we need your service, put a musket in his hand and away he goes. Like he knows he, they're soldiers. So they so I assumed uh, just about all of these were just like common mobs you could get to help you, but are, you're saying the militarists you can actually like permanently enlist them? Uh, they yeah, because you're they, you're they, raising they, troops. Yeah, you're raising troops. Yep, yeah. they're under your. Although uh, they will. Yeah, they would join whatever military you're part of. So they'd sign up. So in this so case, long they as sign we're up with the good... militia. Okay, yeah. As long Especially as you're in good because... standing with the military, yeah. Yeah. Di and different factions have different quality of people. Like, you, you can, I think, uh, like, the church zealots, it's like, well, they don't, they're not great soldiers, but they have great willpower. <laughs> like, they're very hard to break, whereas militaries are great shots, but not nearly as high morale. So there are different classes of zero in that regard um, as well. And... You have my word, Captain, that the Dom Rousseau and the church in general are not part of this. Um, so I don't request it because you may have your suspicions, but I suggest the possibility that uh, she too could raise some number of loyal churchman actually i take that back can she because uh you were telling me that uh gm on a meta level that she's actually a monarchist yeah she's a monarchist not a okay so he, most people he suspect just... she's of the church but she's actually a monarchist okay so <laughs> his his ban on putting her on the church is really misplaced it is he doesn't know that though <laughs> okay yeah i'll say yeah i'll say sir I, yeah you, you may be mistaken that she her her true loyalties don't lie with the church although she's quite devout they lie with the monarchy in general uh which is currently the emperor i don't mm. think she's not an old school monarchist so um well and she's been very amenable and and i have made great strides in convincing her of constitutional uh order so i i think um her she could raise some in this specific case loyal 
followers. I would not trust them long-term. I would not induct them into the military, but they may be a mob which would, in this case, be on our side. But that is a very tenuous proposition, so I would only do that if you... Uh, I would only suggest that course of action if uh, you felt the situation was somewhat desperate. If you can convince a monarchist to support constitutional order, uh, you are more than welcome to ask her. Uh, but All right. I doubt... I'm now beginning to understand a little more why uh, she's guarded, a lot more guarded around me. Uh, but, yes. <laughs> so um, it might come better from a uh, her parole uh, officer, as it were, to uh, make a request uh, it, more uh, on a more uh, friendly level than a uh, an old veteran of the revolution. Yeah, it it took it took more convincing than I thought was proper to uh, to suggest that um, ultimate legal authority does not flow from Saint Solara, mm. but from the from the uh, rules established by the common people and agreed to by the military and the monarch. I still don't like the idea of a separate military. All military forces should be held solely by the nation rather than any sort of internal organizations, particularly organizations which claim to be supranational. supranational. Yeah, I, I don't think that, I, I don't think of this as a permanent unit. Mm. Very well then. Sue lieutenants, to your duties. Sir. Um... I have a couple of things that I need to do. Yeah. Uh, Borza's first stop is to uh, Safwan. Yeah, same. Uh, the four of you find Safwan uh, in the garrison square getting uh, his troops ready to move. Uh, Lieutenant Safwan. A word, if I may, about dispositions. Sue Lieutenant. As Lieutenant McNeil is taking command of the Voltigeurs uh, for the day, I think uh, as a sharpshooter, my best positioning would be a place of prominence along the Emperor's route where I could cover uh, the vast majority of it. Um, while the Gilded Griffin is obviously the larger structure. It's also would be obvious to any would be assassin. So I have obtained Captain Leclerc's permission to position myself uh, in the attic and roof of his house. Um, I wanted to let you know in case you wanted to send any voltageurs along with or and also to let you know where I would be in case um, everything goes sideways and I have to fire so I wouldn't receive a volley from your men. Hmm. I'll uh, I'll let my captain know where you are. He'll likely send a voltageur out your way, maybe two. Mm, understood. Uh, we also. Uh, uh, oh, I guess the captain can tell him that. Never mind. I have a mechanical question. Sure. I know hidden message is specifically a point spend. So how would I go about it if I intentionally want to give a hidden message? But I don't know if I'll have the stunt points yet. Is that just like I, I try to get say pleasantries or something, and if I don't get the stunt points, then they, he, we just say he doesn't understand. You would, in effect, you're per, you're trying to do a stunt on purpose, a, a specific stunt. Uh, in combat, it's a stunt attack. In social con, uh, context, uh, you can basically when you do a stunt attack or a stunt task. Um, even if you get no stunt points from the roll, you do generate two stunt points because you're not after, like saying a stunt attack, you're not trying to hit the guy, you're trying to disarm him. So you get two stunt points and that usually is enough for disarm. If you're trying to do something more advanced, like say manipulate or lethal blow, um, then, um, or seize initiative, uh, you make it two cheaper, even if you get, if you, if you get, if you make the check, but 
you don't generate stem points, you'll be uh, the two extra you need, then you're kind of left in that gap. You don't succeed at the thing you're doing because it's that hard to do. In this case, it is a stem point of two. Um, so yeah, you can, as long as you hit a basic a target number of just getting this person to sit there and listen to you trying to give them a hidden message, that you'll succeed at giving them the message. Okay. Um, I want to convince him to do something. So is that communication persuasion? Yep. And he's a militarist? Yep. Then that's a 29. <laughs> Triple six is okay. And the stunt is already too cheaper. <laughs> you, well, you generate two, basically. So you have not six so have... stunt points, but eight. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so have at. You have uh, at least two of that, I imagine, is going to hidden message. <laughs> yeah, the hidden message is... Um, you will be the center of the assault. Any sign of trouble that you send out, I'll be there, right? Like, you know, I'm basically very sternly saying good luck in a you're going to need it way. And then saying, uh, you know, you're letting the lieutenant know you, that you can, they can call on your unit in particular as reinforcements. Yes. Um. God, the check to see through this hidden message is so high. That I, I don't think the secret de Roi would be able to figure this out. <laughs> That's so high. You probably reference some random bit from some something uh, of Cephon's hometown or something like uh, whatever. Pay attention. Um, I want to, I guess, um, I'll pay attention to his response. Um, the lead you get off of, of Safwan is that he is partially alarmed by what you're saying but then it seems to be recalculating their tactic their strategy based on that new information so you're not part of whatever plan Sifon has though they haven't voiced it but you've, you've now become part of that calculus uh, I spend the remaining three points on assist to him so if he has to make a roll, roll, well, his next test gets plus three to it. Okay. Very good, so Lieutenant. Your... I will en endeavor to teach you uh, the... Whistle uh, signals from uh, my hometown. Um, it's just outside of Lumerberg, uh, but uh, honestly, it's just a ba it's just based off of uh, uh, Le Marseille. I mean, just different wording, real uh, different, just a couple notes higher. But uh, thank you for asking. They're playing into the hidden message, like eh, yeah, we're talking about random songs. All right. Then I think. Diego has already informed you of the other movements. Of his um, movements, certainly. Is there other movements? Uh, we have prepared uh, secondary positions should uh, dispositions for the militia forces changed change. Uh, the voltageers will. Uh, removed from their current positions in the forest flanking the Stornhelm estate into positions in the market square uh, from whence they can uh, be easily deployed uh, should it be needed on the Emperor's route, uh, while the cavalry will uh, leave, fall back uh, into the town square uh, if necessary as a kind of central uh, rapid reaction force. I'll have to inform uh, Officer Riverwind of this. Uh, 
as I said, these are contingency positionings. Uh, to this point, the uh, dispositions of both forces have not changed. Uh, but <clears throat> as uh, militia, uh, we're just making contingencies to make sure the town is uh, protected uh, so that the Imperial Guard, not have nod towards them, can concentrate on uh, protecting the Emperor and his family. Uh, on a meta level, are you trying to communicate to Safwan not to tell Riverwind about this? Um, yeah, and kind of letting him know that we have uh, information also that Same our disposition may, may be changed. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, you're, you're kind of hidden messaging to him, but also convincing yep. him. Hidden message is only two, so all you got to do is succeed. Yep. Um, character. Communication persuasion. Then again, if you can roll triple sixes, I would suggest it. Yeah, but I did succeed, I think. Yeah, it's, it's fairly. So Fonda is uh, not fond of changing plans on the f morning of, right. but uh, right. they just kind of uh, yeah, rub, their, rub the brow of their nose for a bit and just kind of, very well, I'll allow oh, the well. militia. I, I don't believe that we need bother with the higher militaries with the particulars of militia movements. It's not... Yeah. No, there's no sense of us micromanaging. That's the whole purpose of militias, after all. But yeah, that would my basic uh, hidden message would be that you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're we've got information that we're expecting that the militia will be repositioned at some point by imperial authority. And yeah. Is that all? Thanks, Solera. I hope so. Good day. And he gives you a nod. Ah. Returns your salutes. Uh, what is the... I saw the target number, but what is the role to uh, do some quick enlistments? Uh, so I think our target number, because of the size of this town, is like... Four, 13. 13. 13, yep. What's the actual role? Oh, communication. Sorry. Communication leadership, generally. Yeah, so that's one of the leadership the communications I have. <laughs> Which, I guess, which is kind of unfortunate because the Salon of LaSalle doesn't have this ability. <laughs> no. uh, does it... I assume it doesn't benefit from... No, because uh, it's only like communication, persuasion, and strength intimidation that get the benefit of the reputations. Oh, I can't remember where you listed that. Uh, oh, uh, actually, P this PC gains plus three to communication checks with members of that faction as well as minus three to mem uh, non members. So I think it's all communication checks. It's right? all communication. It's, it's So strength intimidation doesn't work because it's not a communication test. Okay. Right. So this would also be it. Uh, plus. Eight. For those at home who are wondering where that's that's all coming from, that's these are house rules that I've put in, uh, of one of many. That's a 16 for me. Uh, yep, that's... Oh, you have leadership? No. Oh. Just huge rep I'm... with militarists. <laughs> uh, 15 for me. Okay, so I believe I owe each of you some troops. Uh, not... not... 15 it should be um 18 with you it's the plus three you get for being an official member plus the three you already had from yeah. your reputation oh oh yeah is that uh, okay yeah. then uh so duma is able to raise six or show five ah oh, excellent uh do we have the supplies uh because these are militarists do we have the ability to roll them into our normal units or do we need to separate them off as a special thing um, 
They at current the best they can be right now is um regular line. Regular line infantry because you need uh, and, specific equipment. Cuz any you know any military is worth their salt probably has a musket or can get a musket quickly. But voltageers have specific equipment uh and especially okay. Borgia's voltageers oh. are, are riflemen so they don't actually have rifles though. Right. Oh, well, that's true, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they could be volta in this case they could be uh, voltageer or infantry because both use muskets. They just need the yeah. right color uniform. Uh, Although just... now I have that fifteen percent uh, discount, they'll be riflemen soon. Uh, as soon as we can find a gunsmith. I would say break uh, them out for now, unless you have a specific place you want them want them to be. Like they would I... default to inf basic infantry unless you specifically put. Them well, in I'm thinking about uh, like organizing my guys under Diego. Right, because they they would just slow me. They would make me less effective. Yeah, because you have to get them. You have to get them horses, which you'd have to buy those because uh, the militia only has so many. Uh, I'll take one of them because we do have one horse from the sergeant that died. That's true. You'd have his horse still. Um, but then the other five I will give to you, so you'll have a, a another unit of ten. Oops. Okay. Um. Nah. I don't really know where I want to put these guys. You could just take them with you, right? Yeah, but ten of us up in the top of the they captain's house? They don't all house? have to be... They, they, they <laughs> could just disperse around the house. Like, it, within the house and stuff, basically taking guard posts and stuff. And uh, in the yard and stuff, right behind his, like, little wheelbarrow or his little, his little okay. garden wall. All right, then I need to ride off and meet Rousseau. Bianchi and the horse, if you'll meet me at our designated spot. And I'll take up my sniper's perch in the... What What time are we expecting the Emperor to arrive? What time of day? Uh, Any time now. Like, there, you can hear the drums. Okay. Okay, I'll, so yeah, I'll take position then. I'll position the Voltigeurs at the Market Square, sit down, have an apple, perhaps. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no lines. Uh, well, now, <laughs> remember, they, have, they haven't they have been ordered out of their current positions yet. Ah, okay, then. I shall go to them, then. No apples for me. You can get one oh, on the way. Uh, where's Luciano off to? Uh, Luciano's on horse to his designated position. Down to here is my understanding. Uh, yeah, I believe so. You are a horse. And Dumas, you head to find Rousseau. Yep. And the horse unit should also be moved in there. Should get a big horse. It only costs you like 45 gold. I have a big horse. He was expensive. Which is better than a slightly bigger horse, which is uh, um, 450 gold. Not the size of the horse, it's the charges you make on it. Uh, Dumas, you find Rousseau at the, at the Grand Altar. Uh, is she alone or are there people around? There's a few people praying with her. Uh, then I'll say Dom Rousseau if I could have a moment. She uh, makes a gesture of the setting sun at her chest and then uh, stands up and other people look to her. It looks like she was leading a prayer or something like that or they made her, they asked her to. And she kind of just waves her hand like, no, 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 carry on, carry on. And she kind of follows you after you. Are oaths to or made in conjunction with Saint Solara, immoral, because there are some religions, right, where you can say like, you know, God is my witness. There are others where that just doing that would be a sin. You can't invoke God in an oath or a deity in an oath. Which, how does that work with Saint Solara? Uh, you would, um, by Saint Solara's grace, I swear that 
so on, so on, so on. You would but invoke yeah. the setting sun. That's considered that's considered being beyond uh, beyond your station. But some people do swear by the setting sun. Uh, like some of the Almanians swear by the setting sun. They don't recognize the divinity of Saint Solara so much. But Saint Solara is a lot more important in uh, Orthodox okay. uh, setting sun practice. Uh, then I'll say, um, now is an important moment and a moment that I must discard. Um, pleasantries. Would you be able to swear by Saint Solara that you are a loyal servant to the Emperor? By the grace of Saint Solara, I am an eternal servant to the crown and throne of which she lent to the galleons in her stead. Mm, can I decipher that? Is that saying, no, I believe in her queenship? Uh, you know what? Perception empathy. You're right. Because that's, that's, that's what I would say if I wanted someone <laughs> to think I said yes, but what I was actually saying was no. <laughs> You're not entirely sure. I'll say the nature of your oath leaves me with questions um that i do not have time to ask so i'll have to say that some other time i'll i can tell you why i asked but now now it's irrelevant uh my apologies and i'll leave because i'm not gonna take that on risk So I'm not gonna Solara, tell her that. I, that was me as a player yeah. saying I'm not she, gonna. She take calls after as you're as you're going away. Uh, Saint Solara leads you to glory. Uh I'll smile nicely and then, you know, think all the mean thoughts about Saint Solara, because I don't like her. <laughs> she is because I am firmly a member of the cult of reason. <laughs> or the cult of light. So, Duma, you reposition with your horse. Yeah, I go. Make sure Bianchi is sitting the right way on the horse. You realize I could probably pick the horse and run faster than it carrying me? Yeah, but the horse can't hold a glaive, so it kind of has to be this way around. <laughs> Can we teach the horse to hold a glaive? Uh, maybe mm. in the Far East, but not here. Um... Damn. Those are called camels. Uh, God's in heaven. So, uh, and they've been using glaives for centuries. Borsha, give me uh, a dexterity stealth check uh, with a plus two as you're hiding in the uh, attic space. See how hard you are to spot. <laughs> so your target number for me, for anyone to see you, is uh, fifteen, unless you're using an action point. Tie the re-roll at all, or add plus two, or just leave it as is. You don't have to spend it all. Borja? Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't realize I was muted. I have a free re-roll from a talent, but um, uh, I have to stick with the re-roll, whatever it is, better or worse. So I think I'm just going to stick with the 15. Okay. Uh, Cormac McNeil. Yeah. Uh, you hear uh, the march. Uh, the loud... Uh, you, you can hear the loud drums and horns of parade beginning uh, in the distance 
as you part through the trees of the, with your voltage ears, uh, you notice that the uh, there's uh, a stiff guard around the Stormhelm house. Uh, the voltage ears uh, give you salutes uh, in the, well nods of recognition rather than full salutes. Uh, well, no, they salute back then. Uh, they kind of use salutes and nods at you to recognize that you're there. Do they seem distracted by all the noise and the hubbub? Nope, they were briefed on the, that this was going to happen, so they're not really surprised by it. Okay, well, if any of them start showing signs of, you know, I'm going to look that way at what's going on instead of where I'm supposed to be looking, you know, I'll I'll make the round say, so, you know, keep your eyes front, gentlemen, eyes front. Uh, communication, leadership, or military lore. That's screw military lore. Who has that? Uh, me, I have it. I mean, we all really should, but only one of us does. <laughs> Here's a 18 with three stun points. You definitely succeed. You have three stun points. I was not a big enough nerve nerd to take engineering at the academy. Um. Uh, um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pay attention. Yeah, I'm gonna spend three to pay attention. While I'm still here, while I'm not um... being redeployed, because I remember what Diego told me. Um, that something might be going on here with this lake. Uh, you notice that um, of all the doors and windows that are guarded, like, it is... If anyone were to try to sneak into Stormhelm, it would be near nigh impossible. Um, getting out would also be difficult as well, because there's people in the way. Um, but one place in particular that is not uh, blocked up very much is uh, one of the doors uh, facing the lake. Huh. And you see serpents uh... coming and going from it, which that seems like the obvious excuse of it. But still, you would think that it would be a sentry beside the door or something. Uh, I'll take two men, uh, and I'll say, put some shrubbery on yourselves. I don't care what, but make sure you blend in with the with the wood, and keep an eye on that door and that door specifically. If someone comes out of there, I want to know. If someone goes in, I also want to know. Do you understand? Mm. Even if our orders change, remain here. And report to the market square. Uh, communication roll. Just to make sure they clearly understand the orders. They okay. ask a couple of clarifying questions, but you're very quickly able to get them to understand. Like, okay, yes, sir. All right, good. Eyes front. Yes, sir. And I'll continue making the rounds. In time, the parade comes down. And the loud uh, drumming of the Imperial Guard uh, gets ever closer still. You can see the flying colors of Gallia, uh, and sitting atop it, uh, a silver, a, a white gold, if you will, uh, eagle atop it, signifying the uh, the presence of the emperor, and uh, in particular, uh, from your vantage point, uh, Bianchi and Duma, uh, you can see that. Um, Rather than in a, a litter or carriage, uh, you see that uh, Emperor Stornhelm is uh, atop his horse, uh, uh, dressed in the uh, Gallian Imperial regalia, uh, but uh, breaking the majesty of the outfit is uh, his uh, stiff uh, campaigning military boots, uh, shined and... Sh and uh, in good order, obviously, but it's not a thing that monarchs ride. No modern monarch has ridden, uh, other than Sornham, has ridden in such things, because um, they're not supposed to be on a horse. Um, but he does keep the majesty of it by keeping um, uh, some of the uh, imperial uh, gold about his neck and uh, decorations upon his hat. Well, the, the average person's not going to be looking at his feet and all, are they? Yeah. Yeah, I'll... Some, you know, 
uh, still dismayed that he gave up the position of consul for imperial rule, but at least he doesn't insult us by acting like a monarch, <laughs> right? I would be really insulted if he had come in like a, like a overly opulent carriage or if he was literally being carried by people and their soldiers on a litter. Oh, that would be so insulting. But this is this is tolerable. Well, yeah, so much better, so much of a difference from consul for life to emperor. Yeah, it's just a terrible difference. One of those was acceptable, an acceptable compromise. <laughs> this one is not. Uh, he was elected to both offices. I mean, you know. Uh, and then uh, you can hear, you can see the fluttering uh, banner of the Almanian Empire. Uh, you can see that the, there's the ensigns of its navy on two of the ships, but the center ship uh, is the one that is uh, graced with the Imperial Eagle itself uh, and with the full colors of the Imperial household. Oh. Here we sit, Sue Lieutenant, at the the precipice of history, it seems. Uh Yes. Likely to fall off of it. Well, that as well. People cheer and wave flags as they see uh and uh some people throw uh uh little trinkets out into the road. Um, as the emperor kind of waves at people and smiles, uh, occasionally here or there, some militiaman uh, has to uh, someone dares to even look at the emperor the wrong way, and they very swiftly are pulled into a room or yanked away or secured. And uh, hell, even some people, some of the common folk, do it themselves. Hey, who are you? Stop. <laughs> Hey, this guy's causing trouble, you know, that sort of thing. So any trouble that would have happened here gets squashed immediately because there's just way too many troops here for any uh, chicanery to really succeed without great numbers. Uh, I'll have the... Uh, the cuirassé uh, salute as he passes. The militiamen all kind of uh, t take up their swords and hold them up before themselves and salute. And you can see your militiamen are shaking. Like, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. <laughs> like, they knew this guy when he was a kid, and now he's the emperor, and it's this really overwhelming, like, holy crap. Holy they're really showing that they are militiamen. Uh, but they're doing their best. They're, they're, they're paying their respects, but they look every much the farmer, the tradesman, uh, rather than the soldier, because they it, this is just so overwhelming for them. Men, strong arms, stiff chin, concentrate. Uh, you see an officer stride out uh, uh, from the unit and goes over to speak with Lieutenant Safwan and Captain Leclerc, presumably the captain of the uh, Imperial Guard, discussing with them what's ha what's uh, what the plans are. Uh, you see Leclerc looks furious for a second, and then he just kind of... And then the guy... You can almost hear a bit of shouting, but from all the cheers, you can't hear what they're saying. But uh, the captain has dressed down Leclerc, and Leclerc just kind of fumes and then peels together, fashions a salute, and looks at Safan briefly. Safan just kind of gives a little, like, apologetic nod, and then Leclerc marches alone away from the unit. In time, the ships come to dock. Uh, well, a, the the royal ship uh, comes to dock because the other two can't really fit. Um, so, in actuality, I should probably put like two other ships worth out here, and they kind of spread out a little bit to make sure no one gets any funny ideas of trying to rush the dock from the water. Uh, you can see that some of the militia cannons are scanning around for anyone trying to roll up. Um, and then from the ship disembarks, uh, the Imperial Princess, uh, Adelaide Von, uh, the name always falls away from me. It's so long. Well, you're the one who made it. I know, right? 
Um, von Sonnenlichstadt. The Imperial Princess Adelie von Sonnenlichstadt uh, disembarks. Uh, she is in far more, a more call to earlier days, pre-revolution, the Armenian uh, regalia of uh, golds and reds, uh, bits of uh, magi blue from way back when, uh, various gems and jewelry uh, about her person. Um... Though she does, she has fashioned herself uh, a bit. She is in uh, her riding skirt rather than her court uh, attire. Um, the two of them meet together, uh, the emperor and princess, and clasp hands, and then smile at each other. And people cheer. And some of the militiamen look like they want to cheer as well, but they're they realize, whoops, no, 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 we're not, we're not just, we're not here for fun. We're we're supposed to be militia. We're supposed to keep in good order. Um, I'll note for Borgia and McNeil, uh, the Voltageers who are with you are kind of bummed, <laughs> but they they just kind of sigh and uh, there's a bit Eyes of muttering. Forward, man. Eyes forward, you'll be able to see plenty of royal people in your lifetime, I'm sure. I, uh, Mark gets annoyed seeing the princess wearing enough uh, wealth to fund the army for like a calendar year. Yeah. What's her first? What's her first name again? Like, uh, I know she's a von. Well, Adelaide. Yeah. That that ring there. That's my commission and the commission of like seventy other lieutenants. As <laughs> well, have you tried not being poor? I'm I'm not poor. This is ostentatious. <laughs> Look, just because you're not graced by the setting sun doesn't mean you get the wine about it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, fishing. I need to learn my place in the social order. <laughs> if any place in the world will, will activate one sense of democratic egalitarianism, it is a brief tour through fucking Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. I didn't. I didn't get you. Uh, if where? any place in the world will activate one sense of democratic egalitarianism, it is a brief tour through fucking Versailles. Oh, yeah. Not only start. Yeah, I mean, you say that. I, I, I wish it would have stimulated that and the Germans a little bit more when they were there. <laughs> they have seemed to have taken the entirely wrong message. <laughs> oh, there's Bob. Tell me his name is Adolf because he looks like an Adolf. This is when you could still have Adolf and be a cool person, right? <laughs> this is before the bad Adolf. <laughs> you ruined it for of, all the other Adolfs. Yeah, you just ruined that name completely. It's like an entire generation of Germans born in like the late 30s, early 40s who, you know, go by their middle names. Spelling his name right. The range is misfiring completely. Yeah, I was right the first time. Darn it. I was right the first time. Darn it. <laughs> you can't spell. You're stuck in a loop. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and it is at that moment, on this majestic, historic moment, where the wars of the great continent. would promise to end is when new flags approach and cannon fire erupts. Oh dear. Uh-oh. They've got cannons. <laughs> we don't. No, the rabble does not have cannons, guys. Trust me. <laughs> we, we do have cannons. We have cannons here. We've got cannons here. Oh. Whether they can bear on whether this We're not coming. a rabble. I mean, you are a militia. And I'm sure by cannons, they mean a long iron tube that still has, like, dragons scrolled across. It's <laughs> like, 
two hundred years old. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're in front of it. Well, one stands behind a can when you fire it, but I get you. From whence is this new threat coming? The water. As from the fog, ships uh, come out, flying a banner. The Tin Islander banner? Do they get? Do they, they make a move? How'd you know? Ah, so it's Cormac who's betrayed Cormac. us. Cormac! Ah, Cormac! It's your people that are the problem! Good! Men, fire on the galleon! <laughs> You're the only... You are personally in the wrong place to be saying this. <laughs> uh, in... We are now in mass combat. Ah! See? Um... I was right. I told you it was going to be Marines. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't see how. Oh. Damn. Well, too late to place any tank traps now, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout to the cavalry. We, we've, we've done this wrong. Everybody grab your MG42 and go to the beach. <laughs> Sue <laughs> Lieutenant, man, what's an MG? <laughs> I don't understand. The allies have fooled us once again with their Disney props. Uh, an MG is a mad grenadier. Oh, there's, yeah. there's, uh, this whole time we've been uh, confused because there's this Tin Islander wearing an Alamanian uniform and having like fake plywood horses next <laughs> to like st straw men in uniforms across the across the ocean, and we thought that was the real threat. Yeah. Again, uh, everything's so confused. I'm just not entirely convinced these are actual Tin Islander ships. So, uh, although the larger battle is between uh, the... Uh, you notice that the Tin Islander ships have engaged the two other escort sh uh, ships of the Armenians. Um, the cannons atop the ca uh, towers are trying their... Uh, one of them's trying to help the Armenians as best they can. Um, this one is trying... Notices this one trying to... Uh, brings ships ashore and tries to turn cannon and fire. Um, but Duman and Bianchi, you notice in quick order that the cannons turn and then they do not answer or report to any fire and they go silent. Um, the Almanian uh, and Galleon guards uh, rush to their uh, charges um, Although there's a great tension and confusion. Um, but however, for all this, the mass battle as it is, we will instead look to not the captain of the Imperial Guard, not the captain, even the captain of the militia. We instead look to Lieutenant McNeil, Sue Lieutenants Borgia and Dumas and Corporal Bianchi to see how they account for themselves and the LaSalle militia in this chaos. To it, uh, we have a prime. We have. I have to ask for your your unit commander. I believe that will be Lieutenant Cormac, as well as what specialists will be empowered uh, in the opening uh, main and finish. Um, I will warn you. You have a chance for one crisis point uh, during this battle. Um, so, uh, and secondly. Uh, the primary goal for you as the Lysal Militia is what um, uh, is, well, it depends. There are two objectives you could focus on, and really uh, it falls to you guys to figure out which one is more important to you. Uh, one is the defense of Lysel itself, trying to minimize damage to it and staying away from this larger engagement that's occurring. Um, or... Um, you uh, try to rush to the defense of the Emperor and the Princess. Uh, you can't really focus on both. Uh, you won't have time. The battle will have... You, you will really only be able to... Especially with your forces, you can only focus on one or the other with any effectiveness. Go ahead, Luciano. Uh, was it this tower that's gone quiet? Both have gone uh, quiet. Like, this one started firing, and then... You notice this one was, turn was repositioning their cannon to point that way. And then they went quiet. Okay. 
Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, get in confirmation on that. Thank you. Yep. And this is um, now a small battle. Uh, this is a battle for the ages. This is a small battle. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say because each of those ships has as many has more than the entire militia combined. I think. <laughs> Yeah, well, them plus the Imperial Guard altogether, uh, like with yeah. all these troops. You guys are, you're, the militia is vastly outnumbered here, but um, I will say that uh, uh, for any successes the other side succeeds at, uh, they don't roll the test difficulty for just militia because you're reinforced by the Imperial Guard. Um, so my target number, it's not 13 because you as militia, you do still have to deal with militia people so but it's still a nice middle of a, a test uh they have to get uh, a test difficulty of at least 11 um you're not sure what your number is yet what you're facing because you don't know how skilled these people are if they're just regular like regular troopers you're looking at like test difficulty of 11 uh, it could go higher depending on how skilled they are or how elite they are um from his perch does diego see the uh the marines heading towards shore uh yes because you would see the ship far farther out and you can see that they're sending out a small it okay. very quickly pulls up and then disgorges many boats yeah so uh, i'm go ahead i was gonna say yeah the, i i think i think it's right Cormac is the overall leader, then you're first oh, yeah. stage with the Voltageers, and Bianchi's second stage, maybe with the main body, and then I'll be the third stage. Yeah, I was just going to say that I'm going to take this scratch unit of Voltageers I have with me on the double and try to infiltrate into uh, the buildings uh, in front of the landing site, so we have cover and we're fighting building to building to try and tie up the enemy at the uh, their landing point as much as possible, if possible. Very good. That may that may that be move. the crisis you you've identified. What crisis may occur in the first stage? Okay. Um, but yeah, you start moving this way. Uh, I'll note that you guys, all, all of you, are able to commun are communicating each other through at the speed of mass combat. So you're getting runners and drummers and stuff to kind of signal to right. each other what, what's happening. So Cormac uh, McNeil, you're aware. Even though you presently can't see it very well, what's going on? Uh, very quickly, you're, you have runners alerting you to the chaos, and you get letters from your. I presume I, uh, I doubt you guys are hiding from your commanding officer. Uh, no, no, no. You, you you probably send your own run, uh, a runner of yours to go let them know we're alive. What what's your orders? That sort of thing. Or I'm intending to like, for example, Borg is saying, "Hey, I intend to go this way. I'm doing this." And hey, McNeil, what the hell? At least you could have warned us. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Sir, Sir Reginald Thorne is sitting back drinking your wine going, ah, 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 ah. Oh, <laughs> ah. Har, har, har. <laughs> uh, so we know what Borch is hoping to achieve in the opening. Um, I, I think I'm in second, correct? Stage two. Yeah, stage two. Um, I'll keep hold of my horse, but essentially what I'm going to try and do, considering the Emperor has his horse, I will charge down to the, the Princess, get her on horseback, and escort them up to the Stormhelm building. Okay, that's what you're hoping to do. Yama, what are you hoping to do? Uh, well, I guess, yeah, since I will be the lone officer down here, the mass of the infantry and the cavalry to um, fight off the marines. And what are your orders in general, uh, Lieutenant McNeil? Uh, in general, uh, those two that I've set to watch the door, 
Mm -hmm. I'll now order them to go inside uh, the Stonehill Estate and ask very nicely if they're willing to be evacuated. As for the rest, uh, we will move out to the Market Square and assume loose uh, formation. The incident may occur at the Market Square or in uh, Stormhound House. Yes, but uh, ask them very nicely, you know, are you willing to be evacuated? No? <clears throat> you want to die here and let your blood water the furrows of Gallia? Okay, go ahead. So the question becomes, heroes of the war to come, what's your main objective? Defeat the enemy! Defeat the enemy. Protect the emperor. Uh, protect myself mostly and the troops that are under my command. Between the two... As you will have to choose, will you be to the defense of Lysel and its citizens, or will it be defense of the two crowns of the Setting Sun continent? Uh, as for myself, I could not care anymore for the crowns that uh, are on people's heads, so it's the citizenry. Does anyone defy the lieutenant's uh, objective? Mm. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, well, I guess, like, the question is, right, we're committed, or at least me and Diego, we're committed to the constitutional order now, which is the emperor. Right. He sits at the top of the order. So, um, defending him, I, mean, I guess. If we can keep them on their beachhead uh, and hopefully drive them back into the sea, we accomplish both objectives well yeah i i'm Which not i don't think we'll be able to do but you know yeah i i guess that it's a little bit confusing that i'm not going to like stand near the emperor with and and fight with him in his last stand but uh, well it's a difference between like as the battle progresses because you guys will be moving around uh, at mass combat speed there's gonna be a lot of chaos that goes on and at some point you're gonna have to. You have to kind of position your troops in such a way that either you're help, you're trying to focus on saving the citizens of Lysel and the buildings and such, or you're more concerned with whether or not um, Alaron and Adelaide get away or survive yeah. this. Get those cannons working again. Because there's different things. There, it, it'll change what crisis points occur. Because that because you'll be faced with um, there'll be different things that you'll have to be. Because if, you, if your characters are focusing on them, then whether or not a building gets cannoned is somewhat immaterial because that's not the focus of your troop. Because you're, it's not just you individually that you have to worry about, it's your troops around you and you're trying to position right. them on one of the two main objectives. And yeah. all, you can't really do both because there's not enough of you If these to pull 10 off. Islanders manage to kill the Emperor, a lot more peasants are going to die than the ones in these buildings. Yeah. So, um, it, then it's the Emperor. Uh, McNeil, uh, yeah. you learn very quickly that the mobilization of your troops, as well as the individual action of Corporal Bianchi, uh, seem to not focus on the people I sell. Um, I will smash something on the market, say, scream out, God damn it. Uh, proceed to tell my troops that we'll be forming a corridor for all those fleeing to guide them if they are fleeing from here to guide them into the militia garrison i'll position my troops on the road here and tell them go for the garrison to the safety of the walls i'll tell one contingent of my troops to go to the garrison open the doors and make it a hospitable place for everyone as much as they can and keep an eye out the rest stay on the road and i'll go with them on the road to direct everyone and anyone fleeing into the garrison the clerk quickly joins you as it seems that he had a similar objective. Um, at this point, GM, I will remind you that Diego, at the end of the last game I played, uh, was giving a warning to uh, Elodie Duval, the master dock worker mm -hmm. and revolutionary, that on when the emperor came, shit might go down so that she would get the word out for people to be ready to you know, get out of harm's way. So that might give the town some advantages or the town's people. Also, GM, question. Did the Stornhelms uh, agree to my offer of evacuation? Uh, no. Let the, it their blood you, furrow the meadows of France, then. Uh, Galley, I mean. 
the answer you get back through your soldiers anyway is that you are told that uh, Officer Riverwind uh, is securing the house as a retreat point for the Emperor and the Princess. Leaving, uh, so if they leave this point, they leave a, a key strategic point that they need later. So be it then. Au revoir, farewell, and adieu. Off to the militia garrison. Um. So, uh, we now have uh. So, uh, in this case, uh, officers in defense of the emperor. Uh, you are your own unit. You are deprived of twenty voltageers as McNeil has taken them to defend the the Lysalians. Uh, McNeil, you're without your officers. Uh, your mm -hmm. checks are merely to are, are the securing of this route. Um, so basically, there's three people doing checks, and as we do the advanced tests together, different people will achieve their uh, objectives at certain times. So, okay. Um, right. Give me a moment to think. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Here we go. Um, of the defenders of the Emperor, who is the commanding officer between, I presume, Borgia or Dumas, as you find that McNeil is not focused on your endeavor? Uh, I'm going to have an advantage for the first round. Um, yeah, I think I mean, we, we, have, uh, we have good people for all three rounds. Well, the question because the question I'm asking is, uh, if a crisis occurs and this commanding officer goes down, if you lose your ca uh, commanding officer, that's a that's huge. So now it becomes it's just a matter of who's more important to defend to make make sure you don't lose your order because you've already lost your previous commanding officer, which will make things more difficult for you. <laughs> but uh, you still have your troops around you. Um, okay, I do have the talent that gives me plus one in test command forces in mass combat, whatever tests they come being, even though I don't have, I mean, I don't have leadership, I have military lore, but. Uh, then I think it would be you. Uh, I dropped all doesn't help. I do have the novice command talent. Uh, nice. Which, uh, if I raise my sword and shout a battle cry, wave a flag, whatever, my allies gain a plus one to willpower tests for the rest of the encounter. Ah, sweet. Um, so are you asking, like, who's the overall commander, or...? Yep. Oh. Because we now have two forces uh, of Lysel. I think it's you. Okay. Because you notice that McNeil is not helping you anymore with, with what you're doing. He's trying to make sure that there's the escape route. He's more focused on the right. Lysalians. So it's like, well, and the problem with that is like, well, now that means his troops are nowhere in a position to help you with what you're doing. Uh, okay, where is our uh, line infantry? The yeah, I infantry. didn't. that's what I said. I was bringing them here when I okay. said um, bring them with me. Then Borja and the infantry will try and hold the landing field uh, Dumas, why don't you try and get the cannons back up and firing? Because it would dismount us and make us... Uh, I think that'd be better for us to use the line infantry for. Fair. I was just wanting to get a a, a player character, honestly, on that. Um, um, but... Yeah, wish, wish. But it sounds yeah, like uh, uh, Bianchi's not gonna be willing no, to do you, that. Uh, I've, I've, I've already committed to yeah. my task. So. Very good. We know our orders. Uh. So, in these opening moves, as the various forces start moving into their positions, launching their preliminary attacks, scouts begin getting a feel for what exactly is going on here. Um, and to really, I mean, part of it you've you've gotten, you, you, the, you guys have kind of pig, uh, figured out, but it's a matter of making sure that this is something that you're sure of. You're, you know for sure what's going on. Um, 
that's uh, in this case Borgia is doing exactly that. His opening move is that he is get, uh, likely he is getting into nice scouting positions to see exactly what's coming on to shore while Dumas and company are trying to get up into position. And right. Bianchi's getting is making his way into the thick with the troops. Uh, for McNeil, in your case, it's more about making sure your voltageers uh, inform you of what's going on, or you get some sort of line of communication with the infantry to let you know what the hell's going on. Like, how much time do you have sort of thing? How many people yep. are running out of the houses, that sort of thing. Okay. So, I require uh, stage one, uh, intelligence military lore. All right. Uh, McNeil, you're rolling on your own, and stage one, I believe, is Borgia in the defense, in the uh, Emperor side. Intelligence, military lore, no, can I not substitute that with communication leadership? You Not at this stage, no. You're, you're, oh. you're understanding reports and trying to get a grasp of exactly what you're being told, so you understand what's happening. I think yes. both of you have a plus one, though, because you both have yeah. specialist troops for this situation. That's true, yep. Yeah. So, and I got another plus one for my talent, so 20. Yeah, uh, with a six on the counter tie. I'm at 12. <laughs> uh, so, you generate Drax, s- yeah. six Borgia. Uh, McNeil, that is not a success. You need at least... Oh, actually, hold on. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't know if you made it, because you're facing rather difficult opponents. Um... Oh, I'm wrong. No, Borgia did get it. Uh, Borgia generate six. Uh, you want to have, you, you're trying to get at least ten. The measure is how much your stump point is. Uh, McNeil, uh, you currently are not, uh, you do not have enough with that role to, uh, uh, have progressed in your side of the fight. Um, you can either... What are these re-roll. guys? Hmm? Formidable? Uh, they are certainly more than average. <laughs> I'll, I'll try an action point. Okay. Uh, better? That's 13 Th- overall. Then, 13. The it's more than challenging. Oh, it's hard or formidable. All right, nothing then, uh, nothing yet then. As you're trying to get an idea, because there's a lot of confusion on your end of like, what? What? What, what do you mean? <laughs> no, no, no. Find out what they mean by that, or what do you mean they went over that way? Like, it's a lot of weird reports that don't make sense. You're trying to get an understanding what's happening with the garrison and so on. As to the other side, I rolled uh, not great. Um, I even progress because I am fighting uh, him. So I mean, if we if we are uh, right, the are oh, yeah. the the Imperial Guard are they seventeen? Oh, right, I remember. Now you guys are mixed, that's why. Uh, so, uh, Militia, I would think Militia and Elite Royal Guard, right? That put us at a mixed at a 13? Uh, I would put you at 11. You're kind of, you're you're better than Militia, but you're slowed down by your Militia, so you're in between the two. Um... Oh, you're counting the, the Guard as Elite Infantry. Yeah. Okay, I thought they maybe counted as Elite Royal Guard at, at Formidable, because this is like the personal bodyguard to the Emperor. You know what? You make a good argument. I, I will pull up to 13. You're right. Uh, if I want to be really in the middle, I'd make it 12. But let's make our life easy and call it 13, because I won't forget that. Um, so even with that, uh, my number 13. Uh, the commander of this unit is that good, so they're at that number. They have... And they have a focus. They have that Scouts. Number. They have scouts and or like cavalry. Do they have scouts? Because I'm currently short. Uh, check my card. Uh, they do not. Uh, their early scouting did not produce any great success. And I think both uh, uh, both McNeil and um, Borgia. I, I don't know about Borgia, but because McNeil has people in the garrison, would he not count as having? Uh, enemy in prepared positions or enemy in fortifications. Not to, not against him, but for him, right? So, wouldn't you have the complication for this enemy that? He, that yeah, uh, my yeah, I have a penalty to my rule because you guys are you guys are prepared. Yeah, so my rolls even I'm even further away. 
yeah, I definitely didn't make it. Uh, wait. Yeah, no, I didn't make it. Um, so, uh, neither of you are within five of. Well, ten, if it's ten you? and I rolled a six. Oh, that's true. He you could you, you could make the crisis point of the battle here in stage one, or save it for a later stage. But they have no points, so they're not going to be able to force a crisis. They can't force it, but you could if you wanted. But we can only use one. Is it one per one McNeil? for the whole battle this time? One for the whole battle. So. Oh yeah, but there'd be one for McNeil, one for you guys, because it's two different fronts. Yeah. I think it may be a bit early to spring that for sure. Well, the flip side is if we force a crisis point and win, then we automatically win this first part of the battle because that'll give us five um, points to the test. I think, yeah, but what I'm thinking is we're probably going to pull that off without a crisis point. We're, we're probably going to do... And a crisis point kind of gives them a second surge chance at... Uh, winning this first section. Like, I think you've got a good enough lead not to risk it. Yeah, because if you lose the encounter, then they gain five. Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe we make the crisis point retaking the cannons and getting them working? Well, yeah, at a later stage. Yeah. yeah second or third stage, yeah. Okay, Depending so yeah, let's not, let's not force the crisis point at this point, then. Tell us military the lore as the opening stages continue. Oh, wait, uh, duh, duh, but I have a penalty, duh. I generate three. Uh, 15 good enough? 15 is enough. Is? Is, yep. Okay, and I generated four, so that's, that, 10. that's 10. Uh... McNeil, uh, yeah. as the opening stages close and uh, the chaos of the battle continues, uh, give me uh, communication, uh, a communication check to at least uh, get s wh what people you can into the garrison house. You're not going to be able to get people further down because too much of the battle is pitched in a way that you don't really have a grasp of. But you can still like grab like people who happen to be in the people in the mayor's office, some of the uh, servants in the officer houses. Uh, sure, uh, sure. You know, I may, I may be old, but I'll pull out my best, like, imposing stature and voice, pull out my sword, if I had one, you know, with my uniform, wave it around and try and be as loud as I can about this. I'm try and out-voice the cannons. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. McNeil hasn't rolled for the, for the second phase of the opening moves doesn't he get a chance to just normally proceed no per, uh borgia's hit 10 he's hit the he's, hit, he's succeeded at this stage before anyone else did oh so we are in competition with mcneil yeah i did not understand that okay my bad if the people of life cell died is on your souls <laughs> Uh, if we can 90. hold them at the beachhead, nobody in Lysel dies. <laughs> Here's a 19 with six stun points. That certainly does it. Uh, you are able to save at least six people. Uh, you have your stun points. Uh, uh, I don't know. Can I... Can I try spend five stun points to undermine their actions so I can get more people to safety? How do you use stun points in a mass battle? Or in a situation like this, I don't know. It's. Uh... I don't think you'd use combat ones. Or I can use uh, five exploration stun points to sabotage them so I can get more people uh, to or, safety. Wait, now, hold on. I, th I think when you roll, you don't use stun points as stun points in, when you're doing like mass battle rolls, do you? Because if so, I'd, I didn't spend some. Ew. Uh, actually. 
believe there are special. Uh, yeah, because I thought actually, it was just you... like the. Go ahead. Um, so there's two things. Uh, one, uh, there is a. Oh, that's a in a crisis. That's not what what we're over here. Okay, so there is a special stunt that you can do during a, if it's a crisis fight. Thanks, computer. I don't need that. Thanks. Um, there's a special stunt uh, that you use during crisis fights. Um, I'll just grab it and throw it in the Discord. Yeah. So you guys have it in front of you. But yeah, you can use. I, I apologize. You can use stunts. Uh, it just has. We. I, I'll figure out how it will match and try to get you to it. But yeah, you. If you have some points from your roll earlier, sorry. Uh, you can use them there, uh, Diego. Oh, good. I'll spend those six actually on that. Uh, so you're gonna do sabotage of some kind. Well, actually, you... not sabotage, but see that, that that thing that you posted that we are the champions. That looks okay. Uh, that's for crisis fight. You're not in a crisis, oh, that's for crisis fight. fight. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can I do a sabotage then, uh, in case they try to hinder the other uh, my sultans try to hinder me trying to get citizens to safety by I don't know using them as meat shields of a sort uh, to hold the enemy off. That's that they, not at they, all what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know. It, to me, it seems like you're doing it. Uh, roll for me 2d6. Uh, sure. Should, should be blue, not red. Six. Here's a 7. So you have an additional 7 people. Uh, of the main militia, you lose seven people who are pulled off to McNeil's rescue efforts, who, seeing his actions, uh, pull away to help save their families. Wait, what? Oh, that's the wrong one number. Day, <laughs> I wanted the knife to go to two. Uh, Sorry. One day you'll understand the reasoning behind this. One day. Will they? Uh, one to day play. they will. Yeah, because the whole thing is, if we stop them here, they don't get into the town to kill anybody. My friend, well, in the main I, engagement, I they think, will. They, they will. I do not town. think we can stop them, but you know, I I can't possibly tell you that. Um. Yeah, it's not. You didn't take. You took away thirty people, not seven. <laughs> it's there you go. And it's not as if uh, it's, one it's of not us said forty-two. You it's, be in the center of town. It's fifty-two. Fifty-two. There you go. Yeah, well, center of town, I don't think it would have done us any particular extra good. Yeah, it's just an open... Yeah, so in this opening fight, uh, you see that there are a lot of soldiers that disgorge from the uh, ship and begin spreading out into town. Some of them engage with Dumas forces. Uh, the ships at sea uh, are overwhelmed by the, by the Ten Islander ships and are driven are driven off or sunk uh bianchi gets into the fray and where uh, the confusion around uh the emperor and the princess uh and you're there just in time to see uh that the uh you notice that the emperor is sprawled unconscious uh, and in Adelaide's arms as she's holding him from collapsing to the ground. And she's calling out for a doctor, and there's a medic kind of... They're grabbing a medic and stuff like that. There's all kinds of confusion that's happened in the uh, Imperial Guard. Uh, they're shouting and arguing between the two sides because there's a suspicion that someone shot him, but as you rode up, you didn't see... Uh, any, you didn't see any report of shots at you. Like there's been can there's been cannon fire, but the cannon fire has been at sea currently. Yeah. And now they're shooting out the dock over this way, so no one shot him, as far as you can tell. <clears throat> um. So GM, could I do I still get to spend my four stunt yes. points that I rolled? Okay. So I think, uh, and I don't know how you want to tweak out. this for for mass combat, crushing blow against the uh, forces that are landing. Uh, maybe lower their. This basically lowers their defense. Well, it lowers their armor. armor. 
Yeah. Um, so what that would do in effect, if you use that, it would lessen the armor of their landing ships, basically, in their defensive position. So they can't. Okay. So they, it makes it hard for them to fall back, or basically you blow holes in the cover around them, and such that basically wrecking the houses, such that that you have better sight lines than they do, and they have you have cover and they don't, sort of thing. Okay, I was hoping it might reduce their to hit number, but okay, that'll work. Um. So for uh, from here on, uh, because of that stratagem, uh, that means that the other side will have won't have cover. Whatever cover I say, uh, minus two off it, because you've, one can presume that you've already in advance, even if they get to a new position, you've already prepared the ground so you're at the advantage. The main engagement starts in earnest uh, as troops begin fighting in the streets of Lysel uh, between the Voltageers and the, the Voltageers and some of the, uh, these Marines, if you will. Uh, although they are dressed not in the uh, gold and blues, uh, the gold, white, and blues of the, oh, sorry, the rich blues and with hints of gold rather than the tricolor that you guys have. Um, they are wearing what appear to be gold and uh, uh, yellow and gold uniforms. Uh, Borgia, you can give me intelligence um, roll because you might know who these guys are. Um... Uh... Military lore, or... Uh, I'd be like nautical lore or something like that, honestly. Okay, so just straight intelligence. Uh, might know. They're 13. 13? You know, uh, that may be a... a uh, you know for certain that that is not... The, those aren't the sailors of the Ten, of the, of the ten Islander Royal Navy. Um, this may be a... Uh, Words escape me. Um, one of the petty kings. One of the petty kings uh, militaries. Um, what's the yellow and what? Uh, the yellow, uh, the golden orange. Golden orange. Was that the same that uh, the people that uh, the cavalry? Yeah, they had some similar colors to that. So the 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 noble house of whatever. Yeah, but that was a noble house of Gallia. Right. Uh, and thus, we focus upon the opening moves. Um, so my numbers are set, your numbers are set. Uh, the focus of the battle then, sh uh, on your side, shifts to Bianchi, I believe, as he is attempting his rescue. Uh, McNeil, yep. uh, you are now at the point where uh, the battle's engaged in earnest, uh, as I said. Uh, there's lots of fighting that's going on. Um, and now it looks like that some of the ships on the water are beginning to advance and fire yeah. uh, on the shores where the uh, Imperial troops are, which is going to start, which is likely going to start driving. So this, these areas here are, can't be evacuated anymore because they are now, they're either shelled or pitched in battle. So whoever happened to be there, Solara helped them. They're on their own. Yeah, but you have rescued this area at least okay um wait, uh, is, it, is it my turn or is it Bianchi's turn uh, well my question is uh for uh because i know it's gonna i know what Bianchi's gonna be doing i'm wondering what your next move is in the second phase okay i would advise uh captain the clerk to take the troops and head to the garrison I will be returning very shortly as I'm going to my home to collect Gerard uh, and Sir Thorn. My Lord Straithcliff, be honest with me. Did you know anything about this? I'll, like, as I'm walking away, I'll turn around to him and I'll, you know, get really close to him and say, The Imperial Guardsmen also question my loyalty. Please, Captain, for the sake of our friendship, don't you start as well. I knew nothing. On your word, I believe it. To your orders, Lieutenant. Sir. And the, he, you notice that he did that, and he didn't look angry or accusative. He just said it, and you get the feeling as you walk away, he did that for the troops next to you. He made that. He made it clear that he trusted you. Right. Good. 
So you're off, rushing. Um, uh, yeah, I'm rushing off to my home to collect my personal resume. Okay, so we'll... Uh, so, uh, the main... <laughs> so, McNeil, um, to clarify how your thing's going, uh, as you get to the McNeil house, uh, you notice... Some strange troops are there. What? Wearing whose colors? Tin Islander, blue and orange, or blue and gold, I suppose. Okay. But we'll we'll see how we'll uh, with yeah, your we'll role I'll be able to help you explain uh, discover what exactly is going on. <laughs> As he's yeah, I'll, I'll explain what's going on after this role. Um, so next role is in the order of things. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, communication leadership from McNeil and Bianchi. Communication leadership. What, have I got the same role? Yep. Okay. Would the fact that if I drew the, um, the scimitar with the filigree, would that give me, say, a plus one? I'll say so, sure. It, it is a rather legendary sword. As yeah, I recall. That, essentially, I'm, I'm trying... Even though these superior officers there, everyone's in a panic, and it's... Everyone, form up. Put the Emperor on my horse. Princess on that horse. We, uh... Controlled retreat back to the Stormhelm. This will be you trying to get these guys to not fight you about this. And like, like, believe me, we need to get going now before we start getting overwhelmed. <laughs> because as yeah. you're saying this, you can see that there's cannon fire coming from these ships firing to shore and some more marines starting to come up. Yeah, the uh, the, the Castrum Corporal is taking control of the Imperial <laughs> Well, yeah. If nothing, you're, you're swearing you're, you're trying to get them to let you protect the Emperor and Princess. Oh, I might have to. Re oh, I'm gonna have to spend an action point to reroll that. Yeah, because it won't be enough. Well, I think you do have a uh, specialist infantry because in the second engagement you do want normal infantry. Yep. I'm still probably gonna have to reroll that. <sighs> yeah, I'll spend my last action point to reroll. God damn it. The, the TN's very high. There you oh, go. We're thinking like, at least a 15. Yeah, yep. so I think I've got like an 18 on that one. Yep. In total. Yep. Get six. Generate six, rather. Um, As for McNeil... Uh, given what's happening where you are, uh, who you're going to encounter, uh, 15 will work. Uh, you do generate two. Um, and I generated... Did I generate any numbers? Um, I just did. Yep, so I generate six. Yeah, so I got um, six stunt points. And six points on the way to ten. Yep. Um, so I'm going to four for Inspire in the social. And I want to put two into Wariness from Basic Exploration. Essentially, they give that will give me plus two on the next test to avoid negatives. Okay. And what was your first spend, sorry? It was for what was For Inspire. Oh, uh... Okay. I'm essentially giving myself like another plus one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you would actually be better set to do uh, assist or impress 
inspires for everyone else around you. It, it isn't you. You aren't your own ally. They are okay. allies around you. If that's the case, I may go impress free and um, maybe wariness free. Okay. Uh, a window into McNeil's problem. Um, you notice that uh, there are... Uh, these men are dressed in more subdued uh, light infantry colors. Um, so, actually, I got their uniform wrong. It would, in fact, be green and blue. Um, but you see, they are they are. Uh, dressed in uh, light infantry colors. Um, and you see Reginald, Sir Reginald Thorne uh, is wearing uh, similar attire. Gerard is incensed um, at the moment. Wait, what does that mean, incensed? What the hell? He's pissed. He's, he's angry why there's a bunch of troops inside your house, because he didn't ask them to come in here, and Reginald Thorne's basically taking your house. Uh, but okay. Thorne does oh. uh, walk out to meet you outside. What is the meaning of this, Thorn? We're here to take you into protective custody, my lord. Protective custody? F what? What are you on about? By order of the petty king of the North Isles, I'm taking you into protective custody and house arrest. This is outrageous! Oh. We're in Gallia! This isn't the Ten Isles! You have no authority here, Sir Thorn. My muskets say otherwise, my lord. Uh, I'll pull out my pistol and aim it at him. And the main engagement continues. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I ask Bianchi if a uh, crisis is occurring uh, to force it, uh, or if you're going to roll, continue the roll-off, because you are... I could force a crisis, but the other side is not going to push a crisis here. Um... Though the question would be for me, uh, Isabel, do you believe that you are best suited for a crisis? Uh, I still have, yes, as opposed to you, I'm armored, I'm on horseback, and I have both of my action points. Okay, then I don't think I'll force a crisis because I believe I may be able to get there. Alright. Another roll off all around, folks. Uh, essentially, don't I have like a plus six at this stage? Uh... <laughs> with, with everything I've just put into it, I have like a plus six to eight or some shit. Uh, awareness won't help you with that, uh, but... Impress, impress, will? impress will. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's plus three for impress, and I get two from the other, so one from the sword and one from the groups. So about a plus five. Oops. God, I might have to, if I if I don't roll a high enough fucking um, stunt die, I may have to ask someone for a yeah. I'm ready. Well, action point. Well, that's the that's the thing. That's that's what I was mentioned. It's not the worst in the world if we. That's a fifteen. Lose this. Fifteen is short. Uh, McNeil, I need a roll from you. Hey, girl. Yeah, you can have one of my action points if you want to re-roll, Bianchi. I fifteen was enough last time, wasn't it? It was enough for. Oh, fifteen is enough. You're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm robbing you. Okay. Oh. So I've got four points, and I've got four stop points. Uh, four makes it up to ten. Yep. Um, screw it out of this stage. Can I sway someone? Ooh. Your choice. No, no, you have to call it. <laughs> uh, can I sway the princess? You could. From your heroism and your stern voice and your... That sounds keeping a cool dangerous head. there. Yeah, yeah. Tread carefully. <laughs> 
Uh, although, McNeil, uh, give me uh, your communication and leadership. You might be able to force a crisis and uh, get... Uh, no, even if you... Even if you oh, no, you could. You, you might be able to do enough. You might be able to force a crisis and take control of the situation. Communication and leadership. My lord. He's, he's away. I believe he's currently yeah, away. Yeah, he's BRB'd. Um, could I get the princess's name somewhere, please? Adelaide. It's on the screen. Right there. Oh, what to copy and paste it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm being honest about it. It's in the. It's also in the uh, Encyclopedia Continalis. But out of there, you go. Thank you very much. I do. Oh, Adelaide. Have... That's pronounced Adelaide. Well, I spelled that completely wrong. I may be mispronouncing yeah. it because it, yeah, it's, it's more like Deutsch. Adelheid. Adelheid or something like that, yeah. Which is just German for Adelaide. Yeah. Um. Yeah. As we wait for McNeil, because what he does is can be kind of pivotal here uh, with his role. He can really shift things. Um. The battle continues on. Um, cannons erupt and destroy, uh, and soldiers start rushing. Uh, Almanians try their, and the, uh, Galleon troops try to fight off, um, various, uh, troops making landing, although there's now these ships, uh, once the ships have all disgorged their, uh, troops, uh, they have, uh, the ships now begin, uh, their preparing to, uh, Shell the shore. However, because this roll went well, uh, the battle is certainly on your guy. Well, the battle for you guys, at least, your objective is a lot more. Because uh, now at this point, because of the. Um, depending on what McNeil does, it'll be a matter of whether certain complications come out from the McNeil house and add to the issue, <laughs> or if you guys are able to kind of uh, make sure that no one can zip by like this to get into the main freight, because that's kind of what your your guys are stopping them, one from uh, Borgia and Dumas are kind of stopping a push into the town but you're not so much concerned with them pushing that way, as that way because you don't want right. them to get at the, so it's more of a, well, even if we don't defeat you, because rarely with your numbers it's a matter of stalling Right. But don't like, want the Imperial entourage to be flanked yeah so you're kind oh, of okay. stopping I guess that that's a little bit of confusion, yeah, because the um, the third stage, right? It's it's generally that we would because um, we've won the first two stages that we have Finish won, move. and yeah, the third stage now is whether they retreat orderly or we defeat them in detail. Yeah, well, in, in the context of your objective, it's now it's a matter of uh, if you do if McNeil doesn't frustrate this. Um, you will have a nice clear line to get the because the main goal is to save them is to save those two and it's like yeah. well once we secure that corridor it's like now they have secure corridor they can leave and the the main fight can continue without interference yeah because i'm essentially just directing troops over here and make, making sure if anyone gets too close to the princess or the emperor just to cut them down uh mcneil uh yeah i do need a communication role from you it is possible that you could uh win the second stage Uh, do I action point this? Fourteen will be I enough. Free, I, uh, yeah, I think you I, get your to roll leadership, don't you? Or you don't have leadership. Sorry, it's only beyond. I do. Two. I do. Oh, plus two. Um, that's an, that is enough. Yep. Uh, you generate two, unfortunately. Um, can I action point it then? My second one, last one. You could. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. See if I can roll better than this. I'll just have to accept what it is then. You need at least three. How's that? That's better, yep. Um, it's now he, he can crisis point it, isn't it? Yep. Yep. So, uh, this is what I was exactly what I was wondering about. So, as this is going on, um, McNeil, uh, it's at this point uh, that uh, 
I think you stepped away just briefly as uh, Bianchi got through his role. Um, you have... Um, you can force a crisis point here, and mm -hmm. if, your, if your engagement goes well, uh, you will have taken the second stage. Okay. But if I'll you fail, then Luciano certainly will. I'll force it. All right. Uh, so the crisis becomes, uh, at some point, um, how far are they? They're actually somewhat far away from here. Uh, you and Sir Thorn stand off with each other. Uh, you draw your pistol, uh, upon him. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Sir Thorn says... Fire you if you dare, my lord, but if you do, I'll have to force this issue. And he kind of, he starts uh, reaching his, ha his hand down to his cudgel at his belt. Don't make me splatter your brains all over my lawn, Sir Thorne. We've known each other for too long to be doing this. Roll Why are you do- Wait, let me finish. Why are you doing this at all? Is this how you plan to get your, uh, to get your house back into the Petty King's good graces? By being so far up his britches, you can smell what he ate for lunch. And with that... That is, that, that is no way to ingratiate yourself. And with that, initiative. No. <laughs> hey, you wanted a crisis? You got one. <laughs> so, is it actually the Tin Isles who are doing this? Because if it is, that, that really is a left field thing. It, it seems to be like maybe a petty kingdom. Like, like, of the well, Tenals, but not, the, like, the High King? I, I guess it could be that the Emperor has, like, goaded them into doing this. But uh, there was no... I saw no indication of Ten Isles yeah, I mean, anywhere I mean, in yeah. any of the stuff we looked well, at. Well, that's what I mean. This is completely out of left field, which is good work, Corbinian. Yeah. Which, you know, and if it, if it is a, a deeper Ten Isles plot, the King could be using the northern kingdom as like if it goes well then haha i'm the great king and look what we've done if it goes poorly ah this was a rogue lord uh, I, was, I have nothing to do with this oh no uh, no one of my emissaries died there how shameful it was of them to let him die and so on and so on yeah. gm could i does my class power of dazzle come into play here uh dazzle's a minor action is it actually okay yep Believe me, it's it's a thing I learned a lot and many times playing an envoy. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. I know your pain right now. Don't worry. Um, that said, I haven't fought a knight one on one before, but you know, you get the brag if you win. Um, I... <laughs> I'm all out of action points. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Uh, he gets a little more health, so his health is here, I believe. Brain, help me out. Brain. Great power. There we go. Uh, oh, God's in heaven. Right. Cool. 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 Uh, what's the number? Brain. 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 There we go. All right. Uh, so original Thorn uh, draws his cudgel and swings to baff you over the head with it. Oh. Uh, what's your defense? Uh, 11, actually. Uh, that hits you. No stun points, thankfully. How does that hit me? He rolled a 10. Uh, plus my, uh, plus my attack roll number. Oh, of course. That's just the raw 3d6. <laughs> right, right. Um. I need to look up what that does, because the weapon that's default is not what he's using. Wouldn't use that against an Earl. It doesn't make sense anyway. Um, well, his that's... giant claymore, you mean? Uh, yeah, really. Uh, hits you with his claymore. That's uh, it's gonna be hard to narrate that he just <laughs> knocked you out. You know, um, <laughs> I just smacked him with the flat of my babe repeatedly. <laughs> um, sure, one time it may have turned, but just the once. Losses, uh, ten damage. Bath. As, he as he swipes at you. Alright. The turn goes to you, my friend. 
Uh, minor to aim, major to fire. Yep. I'll note if you want to dazzle uh, him, you'd have to minor to do that. <clears throat> yeah, no, I don't think this dazzle's gonna help me do anything. <laughs> like He's gonna hit me whatever. He's gonna hit me whatever the whatever the bonus is. So yeah, minor to aim, major to fire. Does that hit? I'm pretty sure it does. Yep, it does. Uh, do I have to declare where I aimed, or? Uh, no, but in, in Fantasy Age, it's, uh, how hard the hit is, is based on stun points and stuff, so. Right. Six damage. That's really bad. Bang! Shoot into him. Uh, turn goes to him. He will all out attack, and with all his muster, he's gonna try to batter you unconscious. So that gives him a bonus to hit, but a penalty to his defense. Uh, that is one less, so 13. Yeah, so he hits. 11 damage. As he taps oh. you again. Sorry, 11? Okay. I apologize, I apologize. That's actually, um, sorry, I got those numbers both wrong. Uh, yeah, it's 10 on the first, for, 10 damage on the first hit, 8 on the second hit. 8, okay. Slightly less worse, but still pretty bad. It's back to you. I have my fancy cane. I can try and uh, smack him with that. Minor to draw your cane and then bath him. Minor to draw my cane and to, yeah, knock him on the head with it. Uh, what's that, a dexterity roll or a strength? Or fighting, right? Fighting. fighting. Hey, hey, six thumb points. You hit him. You 100% hit him. Uh, can I try and spell, uh, well, make those stun points work now? Oh, can I do a lethal blow? Certainly can. Hell yeah. Can you tell me what my cane does again? It's like a maul, uh, or maul, not a maul, but a... It's just like a club, yeah. Um... Like a club, yeah. Sling spears. Uh, 1d6. Plus your strength. Plus my strength, which is a solid one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh no! And I'll roll an additional two d six. Yeah, maybe you'll you'll knock him out. And an additional seven, and I still have one stun point left. Uh, I don't know. Can I get a? <clears throat> can I get a rapid re rapid reload uh, on my pistol? Takes, takes two. Nope. nope takes one. Reload takes one. Is it only one, really? Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? 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 I've been doing this wrong. Damn it. It was two before. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I've been robbing myself of reloads. Sorry. Just don't mind don't me. Don't feel too bad because in the in the abandoned church battle, you were doing it right. You were, you were having a rapid reload on was one. Was I? God yeah. Damn it. That hurts. Um, yes, no, you can rapid reload with one, 100%. Yep, and I'll ram the thing in my pistol and reload it as quickly as I can. Like you can, as and, you're bapping with your with your cane, you kind of give yourself just enough space to go uh, to very rapidly, kind of somewhat clumsily, but because you have two things, you have like two hands busy with stuff, but you you manage. And I'm hoping that I survive the next hit. Otherwise, it's game over. Uh, all out attack because uh, he doesn't want you to shoot him again because uh, that that stuff hurts. Uh, that hits, no oh, stun yeah, points, yeah. thankfully. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's... Six damage. Uh, I'm still... I live! I live! <laughs> Baff! All right, now let's minor to aim, major to shoot. Okay. Oh, God, save me. Uh, holy Yay! hell! <laughs> yeah, let's do it, yeah. Uh, what can I do with four? Can I do crushing blow? You should, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a different option if you're interested. Uh, seize the initiative? Uh, no, three for lightning attack and one for rapid reload. Sure, I'll do a lightning attack to smack him with my cane again and then rapidly reload again. 
Uh, is that okay, GM? You could do that, but I'll be nice and point out that you could rapid reload first and then lightning attack with your pistol. Oh, that is true. <laughs> so I'll try and, like, shoot him, and as he's reeling, oh, uh, quickly, quickly, shit, and do it again. Hey, roll your damage. For the first shot, anyway. Seven. Seven, okay. So, rapid reload, shoot him again. Does that hit? Yo. I think with the negative on defense, that would be like a 13. Oh, what's your number, friend? What's your number? I'm in the wrong part of the book. Rawr. Yeah, because you suffer a minus two to your defense. Minus two. That's a hit. And here we go again. Another seven. He's still up. Oh my good Christ. Well, then I'm down. Unless he misses me. Yeah, no. He's he, not he missing me. He's not missing me. All right. <laughs> it's been nice, fellas. Uh, he clobbers you over the head. And uh, one last time as you're firing into him. And he's being winged repeatedly as he's moving around and trying to swipe at your weapon. And you're making a, you make a stern effort to, to hold him back and fire. And you are moving. McNeil, uh, moves with a greater alacrity and skill with the pistol than any of the soldiers watching from the garrison could ever believe he was capable of. Like this is this old man who put, who putters around on his, in his vineyard with his cane and sometimes give orders, but you've, they've never seen you fight before. And sometimes people forget that envoys are not uh, harmless <laughs> by any means. Um, but unfortunately, he is in the face of a warrior who is who can uh, who has seen more fights than the envoy. Unfortunately for him, um, he knocks you unconscious and takes and captures you. Alrighty, I'll reduce my HP to zero. That means I lost the stage. <laughs> you did, but uh, Bianchi fortunately does succeed at his. Because if you succeed at yours, you would you would have added something to the to, to the equation. Um. So yes. Finishing moves. Down to the finishing moves. So at this point, uh, the fighting continues on. Um, Borgia and Duma, you're able to kind of uh, have this fighting defense. Uh, a fighting retreat because you're facing incredible. Whoops, I was trying to get rid of the box. Uh, you get this fighting retreat back, and you're holding back this swarm of uh, skilled fighters. Uh, but despite their higher numbers, uh, despite uh, their skill, uh, the thing is they are still facing off with uh, some what? Uh, like your numbers aren't so insignificant. What is that? Sixty, seventy. The 70, 72, yeah, 72 people plus two skilled officers. And actually you find, uh, in the heat of your bravery, you find Dom Rousseau, along with some zealots, rush to the, uh, rush with clubs, and they, uh, begin to help, uh, hold the line. And she screams, for the, em for the emperor, and everyone cries, for the emperor, and they move up to Leave help. emperor! Uh, meanwhile, uh, Bianchi, you're able to get uh, the various... Uh, Lieutenant Stefan eventually gets people to leave you alone for a second because you, you're shouting constantly to get people to believe you, to take you seriously. Uh, people are still like, we need to worry about him, we need to do this, that, and the other. Uh, but you don't stop. Despite being surrounded by officers and veterans of war, you stand your ground, a corporal with a mission. Uh, eventually, Lieutenant Stefan... Uh, says something to his captain and his captain uh, moves on to uh, defend against the landing and then Safan himself uh, comes over with some of, some of the troops and says Corporal I have orders for you yes sir by the power invested in me by the Emperor of Gallia I entrust you his life Take him to the house and the apprentice immediately. Troops, make sure he doesn't get a hassle on the way. 
And they they all yell, yes, sir. And then he looks to you and gives you a nod. Yeah, I'll, I'll return the nod and with the emperor over the front of my horse and the princess on the secondary horse that the emperor would have been on, I will essentially charge at full speed to the house. And finishing stages. At this point, Duma, uh, you see that the battle has, uh, you can see, you get messages from Safwan who informs you of the orders that he gave to Bianchi. Uh, and he's, in, he's informed you that uh, the Emperor and the Princess are now withdrawing to Stormhelm House. And to and his intention is to slowly withdraw back through the town, fighting from building the building until they can get back to Stormhelm House. And then that will they're basically trying to buy time so that Riverwind can get uh, can arrange for the emergency uh, escape plan they had in mind. But they need more. To, they know Riverwind's going to need two things. The Emperor and the Princess have to get there for the rescue to even happen, but also it's uh, it needs to buy enough time for everyone to get them into the relevant vehicle, carriage, to get them out of here. All right. Thus, uh, because you guys won the second stage, you guys get to decide how the third stage goes off. Uh, whether it is the communication leadership or intelligence military lore. As Dumas, the large thing you're trying to make sure of is uh, not letting their scouts get a good bead on what's happened. Because if they do, the cannons won't be firing on the shore anymore. They'll be firing deeper into town, hoping to hit the Emperor. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, it doesn't matter for me, and I can't decipher from the rolls whether it matters for them or not. Um... You get the feeling that they are better at... The people you're fighting are more communication-based, less intelligence-based. All right. So intelligence, then, the, intelligence is the worst of their two roles. Okay, then intelligence military lore is the way you want to go with that, Diego. Ah, uh, you going to let me roll? No, it's your choice. Because you're the commander. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm rolling, with... it's just you get to decide. Okay, What's you want your... to choose intelligence. Okay, I want to choose intelligence military lore. Yep. Yuma, you owe me a roll. Alright. I have specialist troops. That's, That's two. 15. Um, specialist plus two, plus one. Uh, plus, plus one. one. Plus one. Per type, but I only have one. Right. Type. Uh, yep. You do make it. You do generate. What is it six? Yeah, you, you generate six. I generate four. Uh, McNeil, you're unable to roll anymore because you've been unconscious, unfortunately. Author, thank you very much for the resubscription. I wanted to choose intelligence too, but I specked out of it. <laughs> 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 I mean. I didn't say it. No. Um, All right. I'll, I, uh, I'm a communication buff, so don't worry about me. Um, yes, Duma. You can force a crisis here, or you can push on. Yeah, the best. Form Wait, no. Of... Crisis has been started, so there. Oh no, your side hasn't done a crisis. McNeil yeah. has. Yeah. Okay. And the best form of defense is offense. So, um, I will. Uh, withdraw just enough to give me a moment to issue orders that the <clears throat> the main part of the militia is to uh, surge forth while I will attempt a flanking maneuver from the rear um And then, uh, yeah, as uh, shouting uh, for the Emperor and for Galia, I'll charge into them, causing a crisis. Um, so, 
Uh, you charge in. And, whoops, wrong thing, smart guy, this one, nope, the other one, this one. Uh, let's do some quick math, let's see how many people are there. So I'm imagining the crisis here, um, to give you an idea of what I'm thinking, uh, that you are, your, your flank maneuver is going to crush the forces that are here fast enough in your heroic charge that the cannons of the ship that's watching your side of the fight don't realize you've done that until you're already ch telling people, get away, get away. Because the only reason the cannons have been firing at your position is because their troops are there. But if their troops get scattered and routed, the cannons might just, out of sheer spite, if nothing else, might just unload on that part of the dock, on that part of okay. the village, and might kill a lot of your troops. So it's a matter of, it's a race against time to kill these people fast enough that they don't realize what's happened. Like, that, or rather, the ship hasn't realized that, that you've already won. Um, um, and I'll explain how we're going to do that in a faster way than just regular combat, because mass combat is supposed to be a little nippy. Um, so... And I'll note, because of your efforts, uh, the numbers that were going to be here have been reduced drastically. I will tell you that at least 50% of the people that were going to be in this battle aren't here. Due to your investigation. Could you imagine this with an extra 50%? Right, right. <laughs> like, like, double. double. I mean, obviously it makes no difference now. Could we have reduced the numbers any further? Like, did we miss anything, like, clear and obvious? Um, You got all the clear and obvious stuff. There was a bonus thing that you could have done, but... No, I don't... I don't... I think the closest to getting it was either you or Dumas for the bonus. But the, it was a, it was like an outlier. It, it would have been a flyer if you guys got it. I wasn't yeah, expecting you yeah. to get it. But it's like, if you do, cool. If you don't, oh well. You're still 50% up. You know what I mean? Uh, so you're looking at some... Zoom in a little bit here. Uh, we're going to look... We're looking at some 60... Well, 33... Uh, three 33 units... Against your, that's 90. Versus 72. Well, don't forget, Dame Rousseau's brought some zealots. Yeah, so 90, the the 99, as it were, versus your number and the amount of zealots she was able to get, which isn't a ton, unfortunately, because this is a village. Um, and uh, Diego's part of the, the crisis point be to snipe the enemy commander. Um, you can be part of the crisis, uh, but I'm going to describe how you're getting through these people. But yes, getting the commander okay. is a thing you can do. So you can get you can aim for the commanders of each of the units. Um, there is a there's there would be like uh the main officer who's leading this entire landing, and then mm -hmm. there's the who's commanding all three uh, units, and then there's the sub officers of each unit. Right. Um, but. There's a thing that can happen in mass combat, uh, which is, I think it's, oh, no, 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 it's not a mass combat thing, it's a zero thing. Yep, it's a zero thing. So, do, 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 do. Uh, I need to be here, da, da, da. No, 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 no. There's a thing where you can like damage, you can damage a bunch of zeros all at once. Like you defeat a certain amount each time you attack. trying to find where that is. I thought I remembered where it was. Ooh, 
Maybe Nelson's here and I can take out his eye from range. <laughs> or his arm. Yeah, no, no, I remember. So each time you successfully attack a target, uh, you can, uh, if you're fighting this many zeros and I allow for it, uh, you can heroically be, uh, you hit the guy you're going, because zeros go down for any damage, right? You hit one guy and you drop as many as you have stump, uh, as many as you get on the stunt die, even if you don't generate stunt points. So you drop multiple people with each Okay, stunt. so there's going to be like a lieutenant or something that I'm actually fighting in a normal combat and then... Your troops are kind of taking advantage of the push and shove and taking out the okay. people around you. Uh, so that means that you will each... Uh, uh, both Dumas and Borgia are present, uh, so you both can do uh, your attacks, your turns. Uh, Rousseau, I will say, will to simplify life, uh, will add plus two to either of your rolls, because even though she only brings with her three monarchists... Uh, from the crowd, uh, she her you 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 both know that she is a formidable warrior in her own right. Yep. So she becomes a huge distraction. Uh, oh, before, who doesn't care gonna... that she's being shot at by musket fire, and she will like cudgel people, grab a weapon, and just keep going. Well, I I meant to do this when we were uh, just a second ago, but I got busy describing what I was going to do. Oh, Bef in that lull that where I'm issuing orders, can I have her sword? attached to my saddle bag and throw it to her you certainly could then i will do that because this is much clearer than the very unclear statement she made earlier just to see what side she supports mm -hmm. uh although she is no friend of reform she is a friend of the monarchs of the land whoever they may be uh, we're rightful monarchs anyway. And, and arguably, Aileron is a rightful monarch. He did crown himself, hey, he but whatever. In. The church didn't denounce him. You know, he wasn't excommunicated, so. And the people voted for him. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't care so much about that part, but you know. Um, That seems really... Anyway, uh, bu -bu -bu. so I require initiatives from the two of you. And I need to roll the shift for the enemy officers in general. Uh, you're this guy, not that guy. Are you? Yep. Are you as strong as that guy is? Not really. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. So you have that much health, not that much health. Got it. Required dex check from Duma for initiative. No, you need to like hit the initiative button. No, no, it, it, it's okay. It's a dex check anyway. They don't have an initiative focus. Number is seven. My number is. 13 plus anything else? Nope. Actually, that should be this person's health, not that person's health. Very good. Um, so, uh, Isabel, as you, uh, Begin your pincer maneuver uh, under the support of the line infantry, Domerso and uh, Borgia's uh, Voltus Years. Uh, you find yourself and your cavalry met by one of the, uh, by the uh, officer of the the uh, lieutenant in charge of this uh, unit of this uh, words family. Uh, these each of these are company. Above a company is something else. A battalion. Uh, battalion, yeah. So this battalion of men. Company, battalion, regiment, brigade, yeah. Yep. So the battalion commander here uh, meets you a ho on a horse and begins to engage you. Um, they will uh, 
draw a sword and charge at you. Attempt to hit you. Fifteen. Yep. I generated three stump points. Uh, they are going to... Uh, they're going to attempt to knock you prone for two. Uh, we do another, we do an opposed attack roll to see if they actually knock you off your horse. Another, we do an at opposed attack roll rather. An opposed fighting roll, you mean? Yes. Please, an action point. Uh, they got more than 16, unfortunately. Um, so as part of the hit, you, they hit you as you're charging forward, and you kind of you go tumbling off your horse. Um, and you take... That took... <clears throat> how much? Two to do that? How much did you get, buddy? Four. So I have two more left. Uh, mighty blow to signify you falling off the horse. And they do a total of... I thought you only got three. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because the first roll was their initiative. You're right. Thank you. Um, so I only have one. Um, rapid reload. No. Um, I'm so excited. I want to do it right away. But he's using a sword. So freaking... Uh, they are going to boost their next attack. So they're just hitting you with normal damage as you fall off your horse. Wow. Uh, nice. You, you blocked the hell out of that hit. Uh, a grand total of four damage. Yeah, no. They hit you, and you get knocked off your horse, all right, but you kind of you kind of were able to defend the hit and kind of control the fall as you went off your... You, like, falling off the horse was kind of a way to keep you keep them from getting somewhere vital. It's like, either stay my, on my horse and get decapitated, or just go ahead, let him push me off the horse. I don't care. I'll fight him from the ground. Um... Oop, I should know that they're a horse. As an on a horse, they are not actually a horse, in case chat's confused. Uh, the turn goes to Diego Borgia. So, with this whole zero things, if I shoot at one officer and get some points, do I kill multiple officers? Is that yep. how it works? Yep, because I'll symbolize the voltageers uh, around you. Uh, or in mass combat speed, you're kind of fire, reload, fire, reload, you know. All right, all right, fair enough. So, in looking around with my spyglass at various points during the battle, have I seen the Admiral or whoever is, like, ultimately in charge of this entire thing on any of these boats? Ooh, perception seeing. It's a high TN. Good luck. Georgia. It's okay. I have a uh, Winilanian spyglass, which gives me plus one to perception seeing. All ones. Come on. Oh, that is not like Do not make me get the freaking Admiral's numbers in front of me. I don't need them right super now. Super high. So... That's probably not going to be enough, so I'm going to action point that. Darn it. I mean, uh, yay. Ugh. Nope. God doesn't want me to find the Admiral. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell where the Admiral is from your vantage point. Okay. So then I will uh, take aim at the uh, overall local commander. You said I could see him. Right here. Fighting Duma. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, let's see if we can't take care of him. So I will, since I'm now a member of the uh, uh, militarists faction, take advantage of the plus one talent grade uh, boost uh, for firearm style, which will give me the novice grade since I don't actually have it. Um, does that work like that? Uh, once you, so until you select it, it le it's kind of floating, but once you select it, it gets locked in. That now is active for so long as you are part of that. Faction. Right. I get, I get, oh, well, no, it says it can be changed once per session. Well, can it be? Oh, I thought ahead of myself. Never mind. I tricked myself. Okay. But I guess what I'm asking is I do not actually have that talent yet. Mm -hmm. So I can give myself like the novice grade in that talent. Yes. Okay. So oh, yeah, that gives you a plus two. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I've got um, that. 
So I'm going to uh, yeah, aim at the captain, which will give me plus two. I can fix that in the sheet, I believe. Derp. Yeah, you can do it in the, uh, the talk. Yeah. Two. Character, I'll click on aim. I'm just going to answer this message real quick. Sorry. Make myself clear. Let's see what happens. 20. Mm. I believe that's like five mooks killed as well. Uh, I don't know since I don't, it's not actually stunt points. Uh, no, no, you do. Uh, the stunt die is always a stunt die. It's whether or not it generates stunt points. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I thought it was actual stunt points that you had to earn to kill extra. So does 20 hit? Uh, it certainly does. Okay. On big rifle damage. Kind of weak. Uh, five. Uh, you do 12 damage to the guy? Yep. Bang. So, Dumont, as you're busily sword fighting with this guy, all of a sudden you hear, you hear the cacophony of, of gunfire being traded between the two sides, and all of a sudden, poof, and the, the guy just stumbles a bit in his, in his saddle as he gets winged in the shoulder from behind. And that should be five other officers, <laughs> or, or NCOs, or, you know, leaders. Yeah. Uh, the turn rolls over to Isabel Dumas. Because that's what Voltage used to. All right. Uh, for my minor, I'll use half of my movement to get up, half to remount the horse. So each of those take half your speed. Mm -hmm. So you get back on your horse. And then, um, is speed directly is speed equal to number of yards? Yes. Okay. Then I will. Um, smoke about, and I think I read somewhere earlier that if you dis like if you move out of melee with someone, you lose two yards of movement. Uh, I'm unaware of that particular because rule. there were a bunch because there were talents there were talents in the t list of talents I was looking through that specifically let you get around that uh. um, I don't think it's going to matter here but it is something we should probably double check on after this yeah it's not good this is not going to matter here um, but I will ride away. I'm going to charge, but I'm going to use, which is half movement. Uh, but that's half the horse's movement, so I'm going to move four yards back and then charge four yards so that the charge works. Um, and then, so I get a bonus of plus one to my attack roll because I charge more than four meters. Four yards, I mean. Um, Thirteen. Now he has to make an opposed. Uh, this is if I hit him, I guess. So is his uh, higher than a twelve? Uh, no. I have to okay. Check that. Then he has to do a dexterity initiative, uh, and he needs above a thirteen. He did not get that. So he chooses to either move four meters back, which I guess would be dismounted. For, he either gets pushed four yards away, or he takes an extra d6 of damage. 
Uh, he'll take an extra d6 of damage, because you're right, it, it would force him off his horse. All right. So, 12. Ugh, really low on the damage. Are you allowed to reroll damage with action points? Whoops, shoot. Uh, one second. Where does it list what you can do with action points? Action points. Uh, it, it's in the thing as well under special rules and effect. Uh, oh, page okay. 161, 117 of the book. Uh, including damage rolls. Take the best okay. Uh, wait, what? The, Hold on. Sure. Take the best result of the two rolls when it comes to the action point rerolls. Oh, that, we that's... did that wrong. But oh well. But you can reroll the damage with your action point. That's better. Yeah. So I didn't terribly. take. 12. I instead took 19. Uh, they are barely a horse. They're really more of a pony. Um, All right, Dan, I need to see what I'm going to do with that action point. Stunt point, I mean. Stunt point. I mean, it might just boost yourself, whether it's attacking him or someone else next turn. Um. Yeah, boost. Roger. Uh, goes to the officer. Uh, the officer growls and says, "To hell with this." draws a pistol from out their belt and fires at you. In what accent did he say that? Uh, well, you're not there, so you don't know. Uh, no. Um, I will allow for Dumas to give me a intelligence roll to figure out where this person might be from. Twelve. Uh, you're not entirely sure. It does sound like a Tin Islander accent, though. Oh, yeah. I mean... Deal with this, governor. <laughs> Probably the not. Tin Island's That's Irish. <laughs> Irish, Welsh, and Scottish. Oh, okay. Unless... <laughs> well, no wonder they can't get their shit together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless I mean, he... give England, Give England, you know, its props as well as its horrific downsides. Uh, the guy misses. There's no way he hits you with this number. Six is way no. too low. I mean, it probably sure. wasn't going to matter anyways because uh, pistols, he would have had to roll really well <laughs> to do any damage to me with the pistol or get a lot of stunt points. Yeah. Diego Borgia. Okie dokie. Uh, I am going to use pistol. Okay. Um, since my rifle is unloaded. Uh, so... Um, I think I'll be able to aim this round unless I spend an action point for an extra minor. I think I'm going to save the action point. So yes. I'm oh, uh, GM, and yep. I, I, I knocked off one person other than. I did. Yeah, I took okay. that count. So let me see if I can hit him. Unclick aim. Blam! Seventeen. That's a hit. <laughs> I can drop six on my guys. Yeah, they're about they're they've got to be getting close to having few officers and NCOs at this point. Pistol. Only six damage, but still, dropping the six other guys is worth it. And how much damage? Six, you say? Yep. Blam! That particular officer falls off his horse falls dead uh 
you'd almost gotten in Winchester. Yeah. Uh, another right. off a Please. one of the sub officers will start fighting Dumas, so another guy basically charges around to fight you. Um, which will help. Only to... killed eleven officers so far. Uh, <laughs> mostly troopers and uh, sorry, uh, and stuff, but uh, there wouldn't be that many officers. Is what I'm driving at. Well, now you said, because I asked if, you know, I was aiming for officers, if that's what would... Yeah, you, get... you're killing yeah. a lot of corporals. Yeah, yeah you're aiming at the officer. Yeah, like these these main guys are the main officers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you you guys are probably prioritizing corporals and sergeants rather than yeah. regular infantry. Uh, because the main guy went down, uh, I have to roll for this new person. Uh, who basically doesn't act this round because they, they have to spend time getting to you, honestly. So they're at nothing currently because they're not part of the... Because uh, Isabel has to act. Uh, because they lost their uh, battalion commander, uh, each of the units will uh, lose 10 men. Um, either in uh, because they routed or they in the confusion of changing who the superior officer was, they lose a lot of people in the, in the, in the uh, confusion. Uh, you won't lose that. Uh, Follow-up officers won't lose nearly that much because they're not as important, but losing their main guy is a big deal. Um, so, uh, so you see another sub uh, another uh, sub lieutenant, uh, a sub officer who is present, who is who, who after the chaos very quickly is becomes the one that obviously is the one that's in charge now. Do they have a standard? Uh, they do. Oh, goal, goal. It's mine. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to ignore this upstart officer that's coming at me, and I will level the lance and charge um, at the standard bearer, because I want to steal that standard. Oh, give me an attack roll as you charge into the fray. Uh, I guess he is he he's close enough that I can get to him with just charge, or did I need to? Oh yeah, the totally. Okay. Um. Then I will go ahead and throw. Uh, aim on top of this is a minor, which give with. Well, you'd the... have to move over to him, so that'd be your minor anyway, wouldn't it? No, charge is part oh, of Oh, you're right, yep. That's why I was asking if I needed I to use you. my miner to top off the charge. I get you. And the answer to that is no? The answer to that is yes, sorry. I, I thought... Uh, okay, for... so I need my I need my move plus charge to get to him. We've crossed wires. You can aim and charge at the same time, yes. Okay. So that is a 12 because of the spins from last time. So uh, that is enough to get to the guy and start stabbing at the standard bearer uh, to grab this thing away from them because that's really what you're concerned about. Uh, we make an opposed attack roll. If you win, uh, you will be the you will uh, instead of like sending it sprawling away, you'll be grab you'll be snatching it away from the guy. Okay, but I don't need to kill him first. No, because you're do you're basically doing a, you're, you basically by your words you were you elucidated that you're doing a stunt essentially where it's like I, I want to get the okay. standards like oh well okay <laughs> okay yeah I did I don't know uh, standard bearer I gave you a bonus in my head but I just don't think that's enough. fighting or do I still use the bonuses from the specific type of weapon to oppose accuracy brawling. Um, no, a opposed attack roll. It, so it'd be your, it'd be the weapon you're using. Okay. You're thinking grab melee. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm thinking disarm. Mm, disarm makes sense. I take the standard bearer and the standards. Ha ha. 
you're my husband now. I'm a skewer and skewer and through with Lance, race him up, ride off. <laughs> I think you beat me. Um, uh, and those two stunt stunt points, those go to actually pulling this off, or no, the t- I declared this, so I just get two stunt points, right? Uh, and I, you, I would. No, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so the some points were the two some points you used were what activated the gra- uh, the disarm essentially. So you had one from earlier from that first from that initial roll, the attack, right? This roll you just did now, you can get some points for as part of you disarming and grabbing this thing away from the guy. I did not have enough stunt points to do disarm on that original attack. Remember, when you do a stunt attack, you get two stunt points for free. Okay, so should I have spent some? Th- that original stunt point I should have spent on an additional like plus one for this roll. I would say so. That'd be reasonable. It wouldn't have changed anything, but that's what I should have. Okay. Yeah. So I ha- these two stunt points I have free and clear. Yep. Because uh, the disarm, I got to. I, I um right. I I get four stunt points on this roll, two of which I have to use for disarm. Yeah. Okay. So I have okay. Um. And I guess I'm not inflicting any damage. Uh, if I do inflict damage from doing a um, mighty blow, would that catch up another two people plus this guy? Because I got two on the stunt dice. Um, or would that just hit this guy? Because I assume this guy is a zero. This guy's a zero. You're just gonna super drop this guy. Your only your main attack was that first roll, unfortunately. You'd have to have enough for a lightning attack to cause a second attack, which would hit more people. Because mighty blow does a lot of damage to one. Okay, guy. so that first attack already has hit a zero. I've yeah. already downed one. Zero. Okay. You probably uh, hit like one of those guys guarding the 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 standard, and then you went and then you went to grab at the their standard to yank it from them. Because now there's a lady on a horse right on top of them, and like ah go okay, away, well, and they're trying to swat at you with Elberts to get you to go to leave them alone. Well, yeah. Then uh, the guy I took the I'll take the standard from him, and then with the other with the lance, I'll stab him for good measure, so he actually dies yep. from this. I'll so that, I uh, don't even need to roll that because I could roll I, if I rolled a one, it would still kill him. Yeah. Congrats on achieving a character goal, man. Yeah, I, I skipped lines on that. Uh, I, I I skipped over the first one and got the second one. Yeah, right. Um, what, d- does that mean anything mechanically? Uh, not mechanically, but it gets story wise, it it hints at things that I need to be aware of. Um. Bad guys, go. That's your initiative, friend. <laughs> Borgia. <laughs> These officers. I mean, he just saw the sta- the the yeah. regimental standard taken. Like that's disheartening. He's a little shocked, That's man. the greatest honor, dishonor. Yeah. Um. Well, it's gonna go back to Isabel pretty quickly because I'm gonna guard up and reload the rifle. Very good, Isabel Duma. Now I will. Wheel about and charge this guy. Bruh. Insult to injury, you should stab him with the standard. Ah. That does, uh, I don't think that's going to do a lot of damage. No. <laughs> that thing will splinter at charging speed. No, I want this in... Uh, Pristine somewhere. condition. Yeah, somewhere where mm-hmm. lots of people see it. Ooh, and actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one... Not a ton of people left, but the losing the standard will do some damage. Will loot will make some r- troops rout. They don't think this is going terribly well. Because well, it's not. Five of them. Yeah. Because we won the first two rounds of the battle. So I I assume an eighteen hits. It does. If that is the case, he needs to beat an eighteen on a dexterity initiative roll. He does not. Then does he want to take an, another d6 damage, or does he want to? Uh, He'll take the extra d6. Being being on horse is death for for an officer usually. 
so 23. Mind you, officer, <laughs> perhaps the ground's <laughs> safer than the freaking quarters. I know normally that's not the case, but... All right, that, that's what your house will have been. He did freaking, what'd you do? 23? Freaking, okay, ow. Uh, they, the, you you do a nice deep cut. Uh, the only thing that saved them is, uh, is that they happened to lean a little bit uh, from the hit and just barely stood a horse, uh, stood on, uh, stayed on their horse rather. Uh, I will be satisfied with the killing the five other people. <laughs> Just move on. This guy's gonna take a swing at you. Uh, and they're gonna do. You have a cure on, right? I do. Uh, so they're going to. Ba -ba -ba Pierce for two, and mighty blow for the other two. Uh, 12 damage. Half your armor. Rounded up or down? Down. Okay. All right. Wait, that counts wrong. Hold on. Oh, it's not counting like it's supposed to, you silly thing. Um, How many rounds has it been? It's been, what, three, four? Uh, I want to say three. Three, yeah. Yeah, it's three. This is the start of the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah, I think because you added the, the new guy, it reset the count. Yeah. There, I'm going to keep that there. Borja. All right. Any officers left for me to kill? Uh, there's some, uh, some other corporals and... Uh, uh, about and stuff. Uh, there is another proper uh, uh, officer. There's at least one. There'd be one for each. So there's two other main officers to shoot at. Okay, so I will pick. Uh, let's see. We'll just do this one. Uh, health, buddy. Not great. Yep. And I assume on the times they hit me, they reduced our troop numbers, right? Uh, no, because they're not uh, heroes. Oh, okay. That's a heroic thing you're doing. Because if you lose this fight, then it's like, well, I mean, you're going to be taking casualties from the fight as a whole anyway, so. All right. So, you take a shot here. I mean, a settlement under cannon fire is 100% taking some form of casualty. It's very good. Uh, if is his dexterity less than mine? Mine is yes. a three. Okay, so I'm going to make this a pinpoint attack. Uh, north like or south? Ernest. Uh, this guy. That guy yeah. Get north. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I mean, I'd like to roll some stunt points, but that just doesn't seem to be happening. Okay, pinpoint attack. So do this for a fifteen. And then, okay, minimize, move, d6, 16. Bang! Get that guy, and he suddenly, uh, and you dropped six more, so. Um, yeah, you're a, you do significant damage to that officer, uh, which startles quite a few of the troops and makes them, uh, kind of breaks them out of good order. Excellent. Uh, I don't have any stunt points or anything, so... Duma? To Isabel. All right. Let's uh, come about and charge again. It's... All right, same thing again. Does he want to go down or does he want to take the damage? He's taking the damage. Well, you you have I guess you have to roll. He, he has a chance. Oh, he could he could he could do it. Sorry, yeah, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna do what? He's he's gonna sit, he's gonna stay his his training says to stay on his horse, so that's what he does. 19. I don't think he stayed on his horse any longer. All uh, right, he died in the saddle. Uh, 
Uh, that guy dies. You dropped another six. I took care of that six. Morale check. Uh, I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Lost the standard. Oh, Officers fall left or right. Um. So uh, that loses five off of each of them because one of the sub officers went away. Oops. Oh, shoot. Now it's all screwed up. Well, I mean, they're even outnumbered now. <laughs> um. Oop. But they're also a bit trapped, so. Um. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Diego Borgia. I actually have to roll for the new officer because it's a new round. 11. 11, sis. Uh, yeah, guard up and reload. Uh, this guy is going to wheel about and charge Dumas. On the south. Yeah! Swings and misses. He gets plus one. If he charged more than four meters. That's true. You're right. Uh, maybe he made it. Uh, he would need a four. Oh, His abilities. Uh, ah, numbers. Because <clears throat> um, my defense is 12. Shush. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, seven plus four is 11. 11 plus 1 is 12. And your defense, I believe, is 12, yes? It is. Okay. Sorry, you were saying numbers as I was doing math in my head, and I was like, huh? <laughs> and my brain <laughs> short-circuited. I was like, what? What? <laughs> How does life work? Um, it doesn't, most of the time. Seven with all your armor. Wait, is it? Uh, no, he did He did get sent dice. Uh, Mighty Blow plus... Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. That was his initiative. That second thing, what? Wait, what? He didn't get any stunt die on... Move these around? Why can't you move these around? Why can I do that? Uh, whatever. Yeah, he How didn't are get you able dice. to do that? How I are you doing that? I clicked and dragged. I was just clicking just out of habit, and then I was like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I, I can do it, too. I can do it, too, on, your own, on my roll. Yeah. That is weird. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, no, shit. Work. I could do it on Carbinian's rolls. Yeah, I did it on his roll, too. That's okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, look. You're going to take away your stunt points. Well, it stays within the same one, right? It doesn't move from roll to roll. No, what I meant was, right, because... Oh, no, it doesn't have to be the stunt die and another die that match. It could be the other two die that match. Yeah, but please don't move my stuff around, <laughs> I guess is what I'm going to ask you to do. <laughs> I didn't know Fair you could enough. do that. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh god. Anyway, um, yeah, no, yeah, he no does four, four plus two. Yeah, so he does next to no damage. Isabel Dumas. All right. Uh, I guess third time's the charm to charge him. Yep. We got a little bit of a joust going on here. Is it, uh, can he be at an 18 to see, uh, to see the, uh... Aha, no. <laughs> okay. Does he want to stay in the saddle, or do he, he, does he want he to does, die? He does, he does. 23. Friggin' okay. Ow. And I lost another five. Uh, Diego Borgia. Same officer target as before. Okay. And I will aim. Twenty with five stun points. That hits. I know his dexterity is less than mine, so mm -hmm. I will do a uh, pinpoint attack. Here's the rifle damage. Then the, the extra damage, 16. Is he still up? 16. Nope. Bud. Okay, I would so... suggest a lightning attack. Yeah, well, one for rapid reload. Yep. Um, let me look at my stuff here. Lightning attack is three. 
Yep. Well, uh, rapid reload, and then I will lightning attack. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to shoot at the guy Dumas trying hmm. to kill. Unless there's another officer. Nope. Sorry, Dumas. Kill stealer. Mm -hmm. He can't take my standard. I mean, no, no, all right. just to aim a little bit to the right. Sixteen. Yep. I don't think you get stunt points on the lightning attack, no, though. No, you do not. Yeah. You do benefit from uh, the stunt die, though. So. Is uh, is his dexterity less than mine? It is. Yep. Yeah. I would do a pinpoint attack there. Thud. Okay. Uh, another rapid reload. Five. I've got one more stunt point left from the original. Uh, there's, there's no one left. It doesn't matter. The, bat, the this, the crisis will uh, conclude in your favor at this point because they've lost too many troops and all their officers. Okay. <sighs> the Vive the Emperor! Vive Emperor! Then people start. Well. They're with you, and then it's a matter of making sure to help and reinforce the main body of the force now that you've repelled. You've either killed yeah. or forced uh, or forced route of various troops back into the uh, boats. Um, or do we want to move to try and support uh, the Emperor's retreat? Uh, like, to well, cover. In any event, um, right. uh, as you're moving okay. back in the... Uh, because you did win this stage, because you did win the crisis, and they lost it. So we've won all... We won the battle. You, you've, won, you've won your battle, at least. Uh, the oh. larger battle is a whole other problem. Um, you've succeeded at the objective you were aiming for. Uh, the battle... Um, the bat the fighting is forced such that that these guys can't go this way, so all the routing and... What, few, what more officers that come off other ships from here just go this way rather than fighting you guys anymore. That just isn't really an option. Worth like it. the cannons fired this way <laughs> and what troops were forced back to start looting and attacking other places here, like the Dama house, for example. Um, but uh, they cannot get past you despite their, their large numbers, despite the support of cannon, they can't get through Dama and Borgia to push up to where the emperor is or to where the courtyard is. Um, cannons rip asunder uh, huge chunks of the towers here and some of the buildings uh, but thankfully uh, Bianchi is able to rush back to the Stormhound house and is able to uh, entrust uh, the Emperor and Adelaide and the Princess to Riverwind's care uh, but before uh, that formality comes to be, uh, the princess actually turns to you and says, uh, says something in um, Almanian, and then recognizing you can't speak it, uh, shifts and says in trade, your name, soldier, I would like to know who just saved my husband. Corporal Luciano Bianchi. Your name is known and will be remarked. Thank you. It's my honor. All right, Riverwind. What's your bright idea? I mean, come along, can, Princess. Could a uh, Riverwind maybe have seen with a spyglass what happened over here? Oh, don't worry. Uh, Riverwind. Uh, actually, no. Riverwind doesn't seem to care what's happening over there. Um, he has other things on his mind. But could you have perception seeing? I'll give you perception. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> At most, you see that a lot of people have been evacuated up in, uh, well, a lot. A few people have evacuated into the garrison, and the voltageers have taken position up where Leclerc is. Um. But. You find uh, Riverwind nods his thanks. The various guards uh, make the, uh, the Stormhelms begin their evacuation out. 
Um, River One will actually step away as they start getting into, uh, they start being evacuated out the back. Good job, Corporal. Think nothing of it, sir. Have you heard from McNeil? I haven't. I got to the main courtyard where the action was heaviest and prioritized the Emperor and the Princess. Came straight here. All right. That would fall to either Borgia or Dumas. It's probably going to be Borgia. Find Borgia and inform him that the escape is made and that uh, to pass orders to his troops, uh, to the militia troops and the ones that are on the right side of things anyway. Um, get the troops and pass orders to the rest of our forces to withdraw back to the garrison. They can have the town, but they're not gonna. They're gonna be if they want to actually keep it. They're gonna have to beat. The, they're gonna have to beat the entirety of our forces. I'll return to the garrison and send, get them to send up the signal. I would not bother. The clerk has been uh, set aside for this uh, for this uh, battle. Understood. I'll head back at full pace. You can keep the horse, Bianchi. I was intending to, sir. Uh, ah. <laughs> he chuckles and heads off. Uh, Bianchi, uh, and act uh, well, actually, I'll deal with those in a minute. The battle starts winding down, um, and before long, the death tolls are quite significant from what has occurred. Um, but in the end, McNeil will find himself in his bed, being tended to by uh, Gerard, but very quickly will find himself in the company of the Imperial Guard, uh, as he's informed that he has been taken into custody for questions. Um, Borgia and Dumas are able to lead a defensive action along with the others, uh, with some information from Bianchi that the Emperor and the Princess have escaped the field unharmed. Uh, the people of Lysel suffer greatly from the barrage and the fighting that swarms the village. Uh, however, it would seem that, despite everything, the attacking forces will see themselves suffering a lot more. Specifically, what's going to happen in the aftermath therein, we'll have to see about next time. For all of you watching, thank you very much for watching. For those of you playing, thank you very much for playing. And... With that, I will say from here that the first campaign is over as the Emperor's assassination plot, as it were, uh, has been thoroughly thwarted, question mark? Um, or certain ploys have been thwarted. And these heroes have shown themselves in light of Lysellians and soldiers alike, their bravery, their glory, and their honor. Thus, you all gain a level, and we'll figure out the exact XP amounts after, but that's it, that's all. We'll see you next time in the second campaign of the Great Continental War of the Setting Sun. Have a good one. Oh my goodness gracious me. That got very confusing when the battle got, like, two-sided. <laughs>